Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Safudi. Get your stickers, everyone. Get your stickers. We'll start in a little bit. I also played around with my microphone, so we'll see how it sounds today. Yeah, hello, hello. Quieter? It's quieter? No. No! <laughs> well, I guess we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Because, uh, I don't know. I put a whole bunch of filters. I don't know if it's actually... If they're doing their job. <laughs> but yeah. Um, let's give it another 30 seconds. Just because uh, it just opened up some insure. Because <laughs> I didn't eat today. I'm waiting for beans. Um, but yeah, we'll get started in about 30 seconds. Oh my god, I forgot to turn on the bot for, for like, for the queue. Let me do that real quick and then we'll get started. I need to turn on a bot right now. No! Hello, Kudiketa. Hello, hello. Sorry, I'm just uh, turning on the bot. I'm actually gonna test it right now, but don't- no one enter the queue, okay? I'm just gonna make sure that it works. Hello, hello. Good morning. Right, open. Okay, close, 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 close. Okay. <laughs> Wait, it's not closing the queue! <laughs> Wait. <laughs> no? Okay. Wait, let me look at my links. Let me look at my cheat sheet. Some say the queue is eternal. Oh no. <laughs> Why isn't the queue closing? No. Do I have to do it manually? This sucks. Hi, me shark. Hello, hello. It's clear. Now you can eat. You got your sticker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for, for joining to get your sticker. 
Okay, it says that the queue is closed. It just didn't give me like a little message that was like, queue is now closed. Okay, let's let's uh, go ahead and go to our main screen. Ready? Three, two, one. Woo! <laughs> hello, everyone. Hello. I'm Babinka Bear. Wait, sorry. I just saw a text message and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> okay. I'm Babinka Bear, artist, historian, art historian, and Sun Bear PNG tuber. And today we are doing some tarot card readings. But uh, we'll see. We'll see how much I'm able to do. Just cause, like, uh, still recovering my voice from last night, from our art appreciation, um, and tarot. Oh my god! So both. Hi, Vite Height. Hello, hello. Um, Beans and I were talking last night after I ended stream, and he was like, "Oh yeah, like your art appreciation and your tarot streams are usually like the ones where you like talk the most." Uh, and I was like, "Oh crap! I did it. Why did I do that? I did it back to back." <laughs> So, we'll see how my my voice fares for today. Uh, I do have the like, let's check the the hand cam. Hello, you see the the beans. My <laughs> I know my beans don't look very bear like, but maybe one of these days. <laughs> I've been trying to crochet like mittens for myself. That look like little bear paws. That'd be really cute, right? I even have the yarn for it. Let me see. If... Nah, it's it's underneath a bunch of bags. It's under my desk. I was trying to do that, but um, the thing with like crocheting clothing or things that you wear is that like you can't like you usually can depend on like a pattern. Like if you're making just a little, actually, I think I can show you guys what I'm working on right now. I'm trying to make a little My Melody from Sanrio. It's it's still, you know, it's still just a peanut, but eventually there will be ears and like a face and eyes and stuff. Um, and that's that's what I've been working on. But, and it's using, here. See, it's gonna look like this. I, I use a service called, um, what's this called again? Woobles. <laughs> I use a service called Woobles so that I can learn how to crochet. Um, so if you're making a little plushie like that, actually, I think I can show you guys, since this is still the yapping part of the, the sesh, I'm going to get some more uh, things that I've crocheted in the past with the service just to show you some visuals and to show you some little guys. I want to show you guys some, you know, some chunky, chunky little guys. May Shark also crochets, by the way, you guys should, you know what? I feel like it's been a minute since I've given you a shout out. May Shark. Did I do it right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. May shark. Cause I know you also do crochet, but you do you do like the the tiny ones that I'm like, oh man, you're so dexterous. All right, I'll, I'll be right back. I'm gonna get some little guys. Here's the little guys. Uh, I know nothing of Sanrio. Is that character really called My Melody? Yeah, it gets it gets weirder. <laughs> There's some pretty interesting like names uh, for some of these characters, like Dear Daniel, right? Oh, that one's not too odd, but yeah, My Melody is one of them. Uh, but yeah, so these are just a couple of little guys that I've crocheted. I didn't do it myself. I don't like know how to do these patterns myself. I use that service that I said, Woobles, which gives you like instructions and stuff. So there's a dragon. It was for uh, Lunar New Year. And then um, this one is a phoenix, right? It's a phoenix with a cool tail. And they're not perfect by any means. Like... I think I messed up here with the tail or, or and like with the dragon like attaching the wings I kind of messed up but I think the imperfections make it bibinka you know <laughs> like otherwise it would just be it, it, you know like how how can you tell that it's a bibinka original right so we got a phoenix and then this one's one of my favorite um beans dubbed it meatball <laughs> it's a it's a, a reindeer it's a reindeer. I think I got this during like the Christmas season, like the winter season. So, uh, yeah. See, it's like a, he's, it's just a head too. Like he's just a head, no body. Doesn't need it. He's like a he's like a Digimon. 
Nah, not dexterous, nor sucrose, nor glucose. I am just saving space. There you go. <laughs> Throw that phoenix down for revival. Yeah, yeah. So this is Meatball, and then this one, because uh, I asked him to like name my my creations, and he, he said, I'll, we'll name this one Sriracha. So, you know, you got yourself a meal just, just with these two. So uh, the reason why I bring these out is because, like, oh, here, you know, you just follow the pattern, you know, you just do this many stitches on one round, and then you keep going down round by round by round by round, and then you stuff it, and then you, uh, you like, seal it up, basically, and then you add little little parts here and there. Um, but with stuff that you wear, you actually, you know, like, everyone is different in terms of their size, right? So if I have to make mittens, you know, like... I have to make it so that each stitch or, or round or whatever fits my little fingies. And the thing is, like, I have pretty, I have, I have a pretty small hand. <laughs> I don't know if there's any way to, I'm not going to do the Shinri thing of, like, holding this many eggs. But, like, actually, how many plushies can I fit in my hand? Just the two. I was going to try to to pile that third one on there but nope it's really just the two and then really just one if it, if I'm like holding it firmly in the palm of my hand <laughs> so so I don't know what else can you do to to con compare my hand size like here's my I, my bear pod case here's a bottle of Ensure <laughs> tiny hand club we can only hold three medium eggs yeah exactly like I don't know how Shinri... What was it? Like, he said he could hold, like, what, eight eggs or some some stuff like that? But yeah. So, the, I have small hands. So, like, if I try to copy a pattern, it's always going to turn out too big. And then I thought it was a matter of, like, hook size. So I got, like, different hooks of different sizes, and that still didn't work. So I just had to figure out how to, like, adjust the mitten pattern to fit my beans. And then, and then, the immersion will be more immersive. <laughs> Just purchase mini items so your hands can look massive. Oh, you're right. Okay, with something tiny, like, um, do I have anything tiny? <laughs> like, I don't, everything, everything around me is regular size. Oh, wait, here you go. Here's a little treat for you guys. See? Who's this little guy? Who's this fucking guy? <laughs> yeah, wait, I can't swear. And uh, next Friday, I'm gonna be getting the Lando Nui too, so I can I can have them have a little play date. <laughs> Bean immersion, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, we will be doing tarot today, and uh, oh, you know what? Maybe I should put the little guys away. I'm already losing out on a lot of uh, real estate here. He's a dragon. Okay, so <laughs> there you go. I did play around with my microphone a little bit, just cause like uh, um, Beans went to go help his dad with something. So um, I was like, oh, now I can like do do derpy like microphone testing stuff um, without feeling it. I don't feel embarrassed when he's in the room, but it's just more of like he might be watching Survivor or something. I don't want to bug him. Um, so I was testing out my microphone. I added a bunch of filters, but then I didn't like how they sounded. But maybe we could test this on stream together. I, I followed this one video that was like, oh, you could put all these filters in. It makes any microphone sound really professional. Uh, I don't know why I did that voice, but let's see. Okay, here's a microphone. Here's some filters. So if I turn on the expander, compressor, and limiter, did that change my voice at all for you guys? <laughs> Because if not, then I just turned them on. I just turned on. And it was stuff like, oh, if you turn on the um, the expander or, or whatever, I could talk really low and it will pick up, it will pick up any sound. And if I start yelling, <laughs> the expander popped me up by a few decibels. Oh, okay. Is it too loud though? Is it too, is like, is it too much? Or is this fine? Because there was also a thing of like, there's a compressor. And if I if I start yelling, I'm like I kind of hesitate to do it because uh, <laughs> his family is still here in the in the uh, what's it called still here in the living room or not here but they're in the living room. It sounded like you were eating the mic a bit. Oh, yum 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 yum. <laughs> I am eating the mic. Yum yum yum. Um, okay, let, let's let's test that when I get like really excited. I do know that I I 
do tend to like up my voice. So, you know, art history, art history, art history. <laughs> Sorry, did that like blow out the mic? Was that was that okay? <laughs> bears, bears, bears. Random nearing, random nearing. Well, the thing is, that's not a real yell. That's like a mock yell, you know? Like, I, I don't, I guess it might need to just be organic. <laughs> It might need to just be like organic whenever I do get like overly excited and I'm like, wow. <laughs> it's fine now. It was only the moment that you said expander. Ah, okay. The level of your voice sounds more stable. Then it immediately popped back down. Ah, okay, okay. The video that I watched said that like there might be a thing where like you can hear the noise gate open and close. So like if I stop talking and then I start talking again, like you, you can kind of hear the, the filters trying to do their job, right? And and they said like oh it might be, it might be somewhat um, I guess obvious to the audience and it might not sound as professional but like you know if it works it works if if these filters sound good to you guys then we'll we'll keep them on we'll keep them on. Good thing you stopped that two times. They ran his thing three times in a row and he'll appear and seize in your chair. No, he's streaming right now. He's I was watching right before we we started too. Can you imagine? He just like. <laughs> He stops streaming. He's like, wait a minute. Someone summoned me. <laughs> and it's like, hello, I'm here to season your chair. <laughs> so, yeah, if, if the filters work, then um, then great. But at any point, do you <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep it like that. We'll keep it like that until someone is like, oh, it's really distracting. Or or something like that, you know. So yeah, 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 yeah. Um, let's see. I I'm I already feel myself kind of straining my voice. So I'll try to quiet it down. I mean, his season chairs could sell new meta. No, it's like the gamer. Uh, what's it called? The gamer bathwater. <laughs> like, some random season chairs. I I am pretty excited for Anime Expo, despite the fact that I know it's going to be super crowded, like ridiculously crowded there. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna mask up um but i remember the last time okay this is gonna sound very risky i'm gonna keep on knocking on wood but um i remember the first year that we went back to anime oh music 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 stay safe in ax yeah thank you thank you what else some future funk and you let me know if you can hear the, the spotify music um the first year that we went back to Anime Expo, because I think I mentioned this before, I've been going to Anime Expo since 2010. So over, oh my God, 14 years. Well, during the pandemic, it wasn't functional, right? Like it wasn't, like there was no Anime Expo. There was like an online version, but it was like, mm. <laughs> like this is that really Anime Expo? Um, but yeah, like a little over like 13, 14 years. Um, is that back on the rise again or some such thing? Um, if you're talking about the big C, it's it's one of those things. It's one of those things that have always kind of been around, but um, since 2020, um, but it is just worsened by the fact that you're in like a huge hall with so many people. Um, I don't think I got sick last year, or if I did, it wasn't with the big C. Um, I'm trying to remember, but the thing is, me and Beans did mask up. That's the thing. So, hello, Mega Bronson. Hello, hello. We're just yapping, and then we're gonna get into the the tarot readings. So, oh, and look, I got a book. I got a, uh, me beans and our friend Mister Rage. We went to a, a bookstore recently, and we, um, I, I found this, and it's basically all the stories that pair with the the cards. So, you know, for each reading, I might I might give you guys a little bit of story time. But yeah, going back to or finishing up what I was saying about uh, Anime Expo, like it it's. It's kind of always been around, but as long as you're like vaccinated, you're it's the symptoms aren't as severe, right? So, you know, me and Beans were both we're both vaxxed. We got the five G, you know, so, <laughs> but you know, we still mask up just because I don't want to be sick again, especially during the summer when I'm supposed to be like enjoying myself, you know, relaxing. All of my bosses are like on vacation <laughs> right now, so it's like peak slacking time even though i'm always kind of slacking off work but but like this is the peak season for me to just not do anything especially since i work from home like four out of the five weekdays detective rugge <laughs> and the ad break is gonna start soon 
Here's hoping you avoid a horrible fate this year again. Yeah, thank you, Safuri. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it should be fine. It should be fine. It's just that it's so crowded. It's so incredibly crowded that, like, all the energy is sucked out of me, you know? Um, but I'm going to try and get as much merch as I can. There's a bunch of stamp rallies. And if you don't know what that is, basically, like, you go to one booth, they give you a little stamp. Um, and usually it's themed. So there's like a Hollow Stars stamp rally, there's a Digimon stamp rally, and then you just go to each and every other booth. Uh, usually you have to buy something from each booth. Uh, and if you get all of the stamps, if you if you buy enough to get all the stamps, you get a prize at the end. So that's what I'm trying to get the Digimon one and then maybe the Hollow Stars one, but for the Hollow Stars one, you like. <laughs> Uh, I mean, no shade to them, but like you get a prize if you do all of HQ, all of uh, VG, and then all of Armis, but you get like a mega prize if you do all 12. I don't know if I have the energy to do all 12. <laughs> like, go to 12 different booths and like buy stuff, and then like, um, you know, especially since like I don't watch Armis that much anyway, so I don't know. Well, and, but no shade to them, you know, and no shade to anyone that does want to do it. If you're if you're super into all 12 boys, go for it. But I might just do, I might just do HQ, HQ, uh, but yeah, 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 uh, the ad break should be starting soon, and then we'll, we'll open up the queue, and we'll get right into it, I, I added another rule, or I guess little note at the bottom there, if you look right next to me, the little green card, readings are for introspection, not prediction or clairvoyance, just so people don't think that this is like, I'm, I'm under no impression that these cards are magical in any way, <laughs> Okay, here's the ad break. Um, oh, the bot's not working. There's usually like a bot, but all right, let me let me take a break. Okay, I think we're back. I think we're back. There's supposed to be a bot that's like, we're, we'll be back in one minute, but the bots aren't working. They're not working. Um, but yeah, we can go ahead and get started with um, opening up the queue for Tarot. If uh, there are any folks who have not tuned into a Tarot stream yet, I didn't check. I was checking last the last time I did uh, uh, Beneath the Moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that you also have this book too, don't you, Owen? Um, but yeah, for uh, I was trying to, to remember who got a tarot reading last time, but I already forgot. And I tried checking the VOD, but I got kind of lazy. <laughs> so, so I don't remember who got readings already, but I'm going to we're going to go and we're going to use the honor system. You know, um, I'm going to open up a queue via the chat. And if you want a tarot card reading, you can type join. Not right now. I didn't open it up yet, but you can type join um, exclamation point join. Um, and, uh, uh, that'll enter you in, but I do want to try and like have a rule where, you know, newbies will be prioritized over people who've gotten a reading before. So, um, if you have never gotten a reading and you want one, feel free to join. But if you've already gotten one from me before, feel free to just wait 60 seconds or so once I open the queue and then you can join just, just to make it fair, you know? Um, and yeah, if you also got one last, last time it's i know it's been a minute it's been like almost a month um yeah just just make sure to be respectful to to folks that haven't gotten it yet uh to, oh i forgot to make the pin post and then i'll catch up on chat i think the command is just tarot there we go let's pin that manually okay so yeah there's also some rules in there if you want to read through that but let me let me catch up on chat first I collect a lot of folklore mythology. I love that, Owen. I love that. Do you by any chance have the Dolaire's uh, Greek mythology book? I feel like that one is like a core memory for a lot of folks. But 
It might depend on where the book was available, but it's like D apostrophe O layers. That one is like a core thing to like, like, oh, getting into mythology is like a middle schooler, you know. Let's see. Uh, I got one, so I will wait for everyone to join and take a spot if it's still open. Nice. You think you do? Nice. Taro. <laughs> The Dolores one, uh, I think if I just show the uh, wait, Dolores Greek mythology, they also have a, um, a Nordic one, but I never read it as a kid. But it's the art style. The art style is like crazy. Crazy taxi. Who just got their sticker? Saku, hello, hello, hello. Uh, I'm just gonna send the Amazon link, not not because you guys have to buy it, but just to show like what the book looks like. Let's see. It's a collection shared with a roommate, so I need to go back and look through. Ah, okay. I think I know the cover. Yeah, it has like the chariot on it. I just checked. I have both the Greek and the Norse version. Cool. Cool. Amazon storefront. No. 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 Yeah, the idea of Binko merch is still is still very far away. So. Uh, hello, L. Hello, hello. The queue's not open just yet. I'll open it in a in a minute. Uh, but yeah, thanks for joining in. I've been missing my Binka streams lately. I feel like I've seen you in chat every so often, and you've been busy. Dawn Trail just happened. Your th your anniversary just happened. You know, so you know. D no worries. No worries, Saku. No worries. Yeah. Um. Let's see how many readings I can do for this time. Um. Yeah. You know what? Let's go ahead and open up the queue. So if you have not gotten a reading from me in recent times, you know, <laughs> then then uh, feel free. As soon as I, I press enter here, feel free to join. Uh, if you've gotten one recently, then wait about 60 seconds or so. If there's still spots open. I, I think it should be five spots. Let's open up the queue. There you go. Encourage getting that reading. Yeah. And like I said, I don't personally believe uh, these readings to be magical or predicting the future or telling what your crush thinks of you right <laughs> throw wide the yeah yeah throw wide the gates oh my god saku uh last time we were talking about i think cielo had raided me and then togi was there too and um we were talking about like how final fantasy characters talk <laughs> and it was something like uh like she almost uh, i think togi said she almost got her fc leader with with the updog joke and I was like, how do people in Final Fantasy talk again? It's like, <laughs> what is up with the, with the up dog? <laughs> what is thou up dog? <laughs> yeah, so the, the queue's open. You can join. We must needs, yeah. We, we must needs. We must needs look at the sun. <laughs> the ye old English. Mm-hmm. Cool, so uh, L is now part of the queue. Sufuri is part of the queue. If anyone else wants to join, feel free. I think it's been about 60 seconds. There we go, Kudiketa. We're, we're hoping for no reversals this time. Let's see what happens. And then I think we, we have two more slots open. Um, the milkshake song in Old English. Oh my god. Learning Gaul and uh, Chir Chirugion were what they were with Silly. There we go, Vite Height, you got one, and Mega Bronson. And I think that's actually the cue for now. So if you missed the opportunity, no worries. There we go. We got L, we got Sufuri, um, we got Kuriketa, Vite Height, and Mega Bronson. And then if I still have energy by the end, then we can definitely do more. But uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how my voice fares. So we will be using this deck, um, uh, Tarot of the Divine, which is not just a tarot deck, but it also has imagery that's based off of mythology. And I have this partner book that I just bought like last week, which um, has has those tales summarized very, you know, conveniently. So, um, like I said, there might be a little bit of story time in there if we so please. Um, but it's, you know, it depends. It depends. And then uh, do let me know how familiar you guys are with uh, with tarot. Because I'm always happy to explain. I'm always happy to like walk back and be like, okay, this is what major arcana versus minor arcana means and all of that. So, um, yeah, I think without further ado, let's go ahead and start with L, Kiki Loading. And I'm just going to go ahead and open up the deck. 
open up the deck. Oh no, I don't have the rope thingy to like get all the cards out at once. There we go. As you can see, they've this deck has been very used because it's kind of like curving with all the ways that I've shuffled it. Yeah, uh, what what is my spiel? Um, like I said, I don't believe these to be magic. These are more so like prompts for you to kind of like introspect. Um, so you know, if if you do have a specific thing that you're thinking about, like romance or finances or family or friends, you can go ahead and let me know. But if you also want to keep that private and uh, for me to just give you like a general reading, I could do that too. I always just draw one card, and I uh, it's usually after I shuffle it. Um, and then we can we can talk through the chat on like what this card might mean to you. But yeah, for me, it's more psychological. It's more introspection than than magic. Right. <laughs> so Let's go ahead and start the shuffling. And I'll try to provide as much context as I can. But man, yeah. you're not a card capture. No card captures of the cloud. Expect the unexpected now. I actually like I I would like to rewatch Card Captors because I only watched it as a kid when it was dubbed and like it wasn't Card Captor Sakura it was Card Captors right because they tried to they tried to advertise it to like boys and girls and it was like oh if it's just called Card Captor Sakura it's just gonna get the girls but we also want the boys we want the boys so like they tried to really like nail in that like oh Shaoran is he's also you know um uh, <laughs> like, he's also part of it. The old one or the new one? I uh, I haven't watched the new one. I've only watched the old one back like when it was on like what Kids WB or something. You'll do a watch along. Oh, that'd be sick, Saku. Your mat isn't part of your magical girl transformation. Oh my god, should I have a magical girl outfit? <laughs> that'd be cute because I do like magical girl anime, but like Meguka, you know. I do also want to watch Princess Tutu. I heard that one is pretty goaded. And I'm I'm also a Sailor Moon fan too. Give me later for your schedule. Yeah. I forgot to respond to you, Saku. I know that you like DM'd me the other day. Uh, but Wednesdays, I <laughs> because Wednesdays I'm at the office. This is what I usually do. I'll see that I have a message, read it, and I'll be like, I'm gonna respond to that when I get home from the office. And then I get home from the office and I fall asleep. <laughs> so I'm so sorry. I will I will get back to you. But yes, I will say right now that idea that you propose, I'm super open. <laughs> Princess Tutu is excellent. Who is your favorite magical girl? Sailor Senshi? It's two. It's uh Sailor Uranus and Neptune. And to animate a whole ass magical transformation. You know who you could go to if you're interested in that? Um O C O I think that's how you spell their name. They're an amazing PNG tuber. They like have a whole magical girl transformation. She uh, she does art on stream. Definitely, I recommend checking her out. She's awesome. I need to rewatch the other moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On that note, let's go ahead and pick out a card for you. I'm just gonna pick one at random. Let's do this card. Okay, no. So, ooh, we got the seven of wands. So. Here is a closer look. Oh my god, having natural light <laughs> is really great for showing off these cards. So the Seven of Wands, we have a figure here. This is also going to be a little bit of art analysis, kind of like yesterday. Uh, we have a figure here with uh, a hammer raised high. They look like they're about to like uh, put that hammer down on a couple of nails. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, there's six nails here. But it's, I think it's implied that this one is like the wand by which like all of these are going to be nailed in. There's a train in the background. Let me hold it a little closer. And this person looks like they've they've been at this. They've been working out. They also like the, the hammer is kind of surrounded by like a sun or an orb or a halo to kind of like for one show its importance, but also kind of like kind of ground, not ground, but like say like, yeah, this this is going to be a big deal. It's coming down. It sells the idea that this is going to come down on these uh six nails over here so this is this is the uh this is the card that you got if we want to talk about like what seven of wands means so there is uh the major arcana which is like kind of big deal kind of cards whereas uh the minor arcana which usually has something that says like of wands of swords of coins this is more kind of like your day-to-day -day activities so 
if you think about whichever um you know like i said if you're thinking about like family or or romance or relationships or um job you know or hobbies that kind of stuff um here's something to kind of like help lead your thinking so wands there's four uh there's four is that john henry we could look it up also hello perotech we looked at that artist that you recommended yesterday i'll i'll uh, show you in the vod soon enough um it might be john let me see um wands is is a suit that is related to fire and fire usually symbolizes like your um motivations your passion things that like kind of energize you to like work on something i'm also gonna look at my cheat sheet no worry i i'm not afraid to admit that i have i'm still a beginner so i still kind of use a cheat sheet so wands represent fire which represents drive purpose career uh, active and external creativity and ambition so think about those words l and uh you know is there something right now that you're thinking of with like what's motivating you or what you're really into or, or something to be creative with um now seven what does the seven mean uh let's look a little bit here at the at the image so it looks like this has to do with some kind of hard work right like and once again this doesn't look like it's an easy task for this person it looks like they're actively working they're actively uh you know like they're not necessarily struggling but it's not easy it's almost like this guy like knows what he's doing but it's still tedious work that needs to be done so let me look at uh one of my cheat sheets and then we'll let's see seven of ones oh interesting interesting so looking at the traditional imagery this is usually associated with uh feeling singled out or having to defend yourself so a little bit different than my initial reading of like this is this might be just like tedious work that you have to do specifically related to your passion or to your creativity um the traditional um imagery has to do with like uh, it's it's like a dude on top of a mountain and he's defending himself but this could be like let's see i think what might be helpful is like the story here so let me see let me see because now i'm kind of wondering what perotech said is that john like i i'm kind of curious now about what what the story is about so let's we have another cheat sheet right here And then I'll catch up on chat as well. I think it's back here. You called it, Perotech. It is John Henry. <laughs> you called it. So the Seven of Wands represents an indomitable force. Against all odds, John Henry stands up for what he believes in and is willing to fight the bitter end. His courage and resolve is an inspiration even to those who disagree with him. So endurance, attack, uh, fighting for beliefs, perseverance, and mounting a defense. Uh, reversed it would mean giving up defeat tim timidity which i didn't know was a word <laughs> cowardice and uh feeling overwhelmed but because we got this right side up not reversed this seems to be like oh like hard work is coming ahead but if you if you persevere you know like you'll you might get what you what you want let me catch up on chat real quick let's see Nico from space, hello. Sorry it took me a while to to like get back to you. But yes, we are doing tarot readings right now. The queue is currently full, but if it opens up if and you're interested, you let me know. Uh let's see. I remember my idea for raise. What if it's a magical girl transformation? That'd be really cute. Ocean X is a quintessentially magical girl. Yes, yes. Agreed. Railroad spikes, yeah. That's what I was thinking when I saw it, but there's the mechanical drilling train drilling train there you go i like the the note-taking mega bronson <laughs> i think for me i've been letting go of things and it's been hard to get motivation to do the things i need to set up for set myself up for success so if you think about what um uh because everyone kind of has like something kind of specific they want to focus on um like I've I've had people in the past like whenever they get a tarot reading they're they're thinking about like streaming for example so how does this relate to their streaming but this could be something different for you if you think about like I said those words of like what motivates you what's your passion or what's something that like what's a creative thing that you're working on that that could also be some that could also be another way to interpret this 
right? Teacher likes notes. Tell mom grades better. <laughs> Local man fights against automaton in the workplace, wins and dies. So yeah, that's another thing is that I, I remember learning about John Henry when I was younger, but I actually don't remember the story nowadays. So um, let's see if... Hello, George. <laughs> Good morning, George. <laughs> So let's see if we want to very quickly peruse, if we want to very quickly do a little bit of story time that might help, uh, that might help with understanding this card a little bit better. You're going to read along in your copy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll see if we'll just peruse it or if we're going to like, sh if this is straight up going to become story time, which I wouldn't mind at all. The only thing is this isn't uh, alphabetical. 119. Oh, here. John Henry. The art is fantastic, by the way. You guys should definitely... Def if, you, if you have the means, if you want either the deck or the storybook, it's great. So John Henry, this is a folktale from Alabama. A legend is told in the southern United States that not too long ago, there was a man named John Henry. John Henry was born a slave and was freed during the Civil War. After receiving his freedom, he stuck out to make his fortune and found a job with a railroad company. The train was becoming increasingly popular. And to keep up with the demand, the railroad companies were laying down more and more track to connect the east with the west. And in order to lay down the track, large swaths of land had to be cleared, rocks broken, and even hills cut through. John Henry was a giant man with a huge appetite for hard work done well, so he was a natural steel driver. Steel drivers, sometimes known as hammer men, would hammer thick steel spikes into rocks to make holes into which explosives would be dropped to blast away the rock. A steel driver was always assisted by a shaker who would crouch by the hole and spin the spike after each hammer. Together, an average steel driver and a shaker could do a good day's work. But John Henry was no average man. His hammer was 14 pounds. Oh, my gosh. And he, didn't, uh, and he could drive it for 10 to 12 hours a day, faster and longer than anyone else. There came a time where John Henry's railroad company arrived at a mountain that they could not bypass. That they could not bypass. They had to bore through it with the steel driver's hammers and drills. At this moment, a salesman arrived. He told the railroad company that his steam-powered drill could bore through the mountain faster and longer than any man. He claimed that with the drill, the railroad, the railroad company didn't need any other workers and could let them go. John Henry refused to accept this. Defending the rights of the workers, John Henry agreed to, to the challenge and lifted up an even heavier hammer. The race began. The engine chugged and the man swung, and both were such a blur that they were impossible to track. When the race ended, John Henry's heart burst from exhaustion, but he had won. The engine had drilled nine feet. John Henry had drilled 14. Dang, this is, <laughs> this is so intense. It's so intense, and it's exactly what uh, Sufuri, like your, your summary was pretty on point. It was you, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the end, like mankind won, right? This almost feels like a, a good story to tell when comparing like AI art <laughs> to, to actual artists, right? So, so yeah. Um, with that, let's let's go back to the card, shall we? Because the, there also seems like with that story, there also seems to be a bit of a cautionary tale, right? Of like, yes, you can achieve the dreams that you want. But if you overwork yourself, if you overdo it, you could die. <laughs> I mean, kind of, but he does die from it, so it's not really. Yeah, I, you're right. You're right. Don't think you're stronger than a train. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dang. Actually, yeah, that, that, you're right, Sufuda. You're right. That maybe this isn't the best message in the, in the ongoing AI versus real artist. <laughs> Overwork might die. Exactly, Mega Bronson. Exactly. So it the, the message still seems to be the same though of like you know hard work um especially in the in the face of adversity I might say because for one in the story he's like going up against a uh, a literal mountain but also I can't help but also think about kind of like the um the context of it like this is a black man born a slave but eventually freed after the civil war so it's almost like you have everything kind of stacked up against you already so uh l you might this might be what you're feeling that like you you might feel like the odds are kind of stacked up against you but this is kind of saying that like yes as much as like the odds are against you like there is a way for you to like get through it this is with and this isn't like it's not going to be an easy task it might even be very tedious but it is doable 
Um, but once again, that cautionary tale of like, well, don't overwork yourself um, or else, you know, this this guy literally like his heart burst from exhaustion. Right. So I know it's kind of like a cop out to say, like, work hard, but don't work too hard. But that that's kind of like the essentials that I'm getting from this card is like, you know, if if you're thinking that there's something that's a little bit too hard for you at the moment, like you can do it. You can do it. But, you know, don't overdo it. Perhaps a cautionary tale against excessive pride. That's a good one, too. That's a good one because this guy was, you know, like, it's it's a very good-hearted thing to be like, well, I don't want to be replaced by the automaton, right? So I'll show how hard I can work. So that that's another reading as well. And I, I kind of welcome that, too, with the chat, is if you guys have an alternate reading, uh, feel free. Feel free. Because there are times where I feel like my readings are very generic. It's like, oh, you'll get through it, buddy. <laughs> But it could also be like uh, you might need to step back and wonder if this fight that you're fighting, is it because you're doing it out of pride? You know, so hello, Rochambeau. Yeah, at the moment, the queue is closed, but uh, or not closed, but it's full. So uh, if someone is either if someone leaves or if I still have energy at the very end of it, then we can we can, we can have one more reading. It's like I should not just sprint. I should jog. Yeah, there you go. You can give my spot. Yeah, we'll see how we're doing at the end of the at the end of the stream. So yeah, let me know if that's helpful at all. Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, that is your reading for today. I'll be a pocket reading. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, let me know. Um, Kiki loading L. I'm gonna go ahead and take a sippy of my <laughs> of my old person drink. Is this an old person drink? I don't know. I'm just gonna take a sippy. Anything that was option uh, awesome? No questions here. Awesome. I'm glad. Looks like a cool person drink to me. Why? Why? Thank you, Rochambeau. <laughs> also, I feel like the heart bursting is also symbolic of giving too much of your goodwill or something like that. Ah, like the Giving Tree, right? When when me Beans and uh, Mister Rage, when we got this book from the the bookstore that we went to, we also saw like the kids section with like the Giving Tree, and we had this whole thing of like. Yeah, the, the message of that one wasn't, like, what was the message of that book? To give on, you know, giving and giving and giving until you, you wear yourself out, you know? Hi, Zako. So, unfortunately, the queue is, uh, is full at the moment. Um, and there, there are a couple of folks that I had already asked uh, beforehand, but uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do by the end of the stream. But just know I want to, I want to... <laughs> Oh, I can't hear nothing. Oh, there's an ad playing right now? Oh, no. Well, we'll we'll come back. We'll come back. Now you're here. So, hello, Zako. Unfortunately, the queue is full. It filled up pretty fast. Um, we'll see how I'm feeling at the very end of stream if I could take any more, but I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Might have been the intro ad. Ah, okay, okay. Aff affiliate diversary. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, so... Um, that was the reading for Kiki, for L. Let's go ahead and do next. Oh, and you know what? Let me do this, too. Okay, so Safuri, you're up next. I think uh, after Safuri, I'm going to take a little bit of a, uh, extended break. And then we'll, we'll go from there. But yeah, um, Safuri, let me know. Yeah, you're here, you're here. Um... I don't remember if you were here for any of my other tarot card uh, streams, but if you need any extra context, like you don't know what it, what it means by like major, minor, arcana, that kind of stuff, let me know. But otherwise, I'll just go ahead and go into it. Let me put this aside here. I was one of the ones where you read for Ren. Ah, okay, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Nice. What is this music? This music sounds very like I'm too sexy for my shirt. So sexy it hurts. Like you, you guys know that song. Like <laughs> the other day, I was alone uh in the house because uh, Beans had to go run some errands, and I was like folding laundry. And I did that. Have you guys ever just went on YouTube and Googled like '90s to 2000s commercials? <laughs> 
Because, like, sometimes we would do that to pass the time, and, like, it's just so nostalgic. <laughs> but this, this music, like, reminds me of, like, some of those old commercials. I shall also grab my old person drink. Yeah, go go get your old person drink. I don't know. It's it's crossfire, crossfire. Get caught up in the crossfire. <laughs> Wait, we did that for tsunami at Rochambeau. Yeah, the the tsunami um and the Adult Swim bumpers, right? Where it's like um I'm forgetting. There was one for like the Big O. There was one for like you know space. I don't think they said the Final Frontier because that's Star Trek, but like. Isn't there like a bumper where it's like, you know, like space is the place to be and it shows like clips from Dragon Ball Z and Outlaw Star, stuff like that. The Toonami bumpers are very creative and cool. Yeah, drum and bass with Outlaw Star and Gundam. Yeah, that was the other one. That was the other one. Exactly. Have you guys ever rewatched, uh, oh, I messed up the shuffle. Uh, Outlaw Star recently because I, I totally forgot that it opens with like a little monologue with the narrator saying like all men were once boys and all men, like what was it and, and all boys have the right to dream which you know me being like a filthy <laughs> like, feminist leftist is like what about your girls <laughs> what about me I also have the right to dream and like me and Beans would just joke of like nope <laughs> Which I assure you is just a joke, but <laughs> nope, and girls can't dream. Women were never girls, and girls don't have the right to dream. <laughs> I need to rewatch. Yeah, Outlaw Star is really good. It has such a unique aesthetic too that I really love. Like you know the space pirates plus like kind of Chinese like Taoist aesthetic. You know I really love it. It's yeah, it is a pretty male centric show with like the harem. Oh my god, with um what's the name of the cat girl? Uh Aisha Clan Clan. Man. <laughs> Dream perks revolt. No. <laughs> no, we lost Dream Per uh sorry, we lost Dream Perms. No. <laughs> yeah, Aisha Clan Clan. Um, Aisha, she started me on a whole cat person journey. Yeah, I like the ep like I guess spoilers. Sorry, I'm gonna I'll shuffle one more time for Safuri. Um, I like the episode. It's a bit of a spoiler, but is it the wrestling competition where like she reveals her true form? I, I just remember there was like a an episode where she reveals that like she can just turn into like a a giant cat, right? <laughs> like, yeah, is that the one? Because there is an episode where she becomes super buff, but there's one where she straight up becomes like a, a lion thing, right? I just remember that was so cool. <laughs> Harry. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The McDougals. The McDougals. Okay, let's go ahead and draw a card for Sufuri. Get something from here. And this card. I think I missed something from what Safuri said. I watched it for the first time two years ago. Nice, nice. Well, there's a lot of anime that I feel like I watched as a kid, and it kind of like flew over my head. So I I wanted to like watch it again. So it's it's good to also rewatch or just watch it for the first time too. Um, I don't remember anything from the show. I want to rewatch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should. You should. That was the most '90s anime <laughs> anime that ever '90s. Gotta run off, have a great rest of the stream, enjoy your readings. Yeah, 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 exactly. Cool, cool. Thank you for dropping by. Ooh, we've gotten this card a couple of times before. So this is Safuri, this is your card. This is the Hermit. This is a um a major arcana card. And like I said, um, so there's there's major and there's minor arcana. Minor is for more day-to-day. -day. Major is like blinking red lights. Pay attention to me. Your future, oh no. <laughs> It's it's a really interesting card though. So the hermit over here. So uh, if we take a closer look, we see a figure that is kind of draped and uh, cloaked. They're kind of hidden. They're walking over here towards the left, and then uh, they have a, a wooden staff. Behind them is a stag, is a uh, male deer. I'm presuming uh, that's all white, and it's also kind of going in the same direction as this cloaked figure. In the background, we see trees that are kind of like shrouding everything. But behind that, all the way, all the way in the background is 
what could either be a sunrise or a sunset um so it's it's kind of like up to your own interpretation like it's one of those glass half full half empty type situations so is this a sunrise is this a sunset totally up to you um now the hermit even just with like the the title right the hermit is like oh it's a person that's alone right and for in many contexts that could be a bad thing right like oh you don't have anyone around you like nothing you know like nothing to do you're kind of by yourself but i think in in the context of this card i generally see it as more of a positive because this is typically a card that is associated with retreating especially when things get overwhelming so um this is this isn't like you know retreating out of cowardice this is like oh i need some time for myself especially if you're introverted like i am this this card is basically like it's time to recharge your battery um but there there are a lot of other meanings that can go along with it so let's go ahead and look at our cheat sheet mm. and I, I got the the super big book and now i got the <laughs> let's look at this first and then we'll we'll look at the tale that accompanies it so the hermit here we go so this comes from the druid and the white stag this is a celtic legend from ireland the hermit represents solitude and leaving responsibilities behind to focus inward in celtic myth the elusive white stag encourages people to drop everything and pursue spirituality so upright this is introspection withdrawal prudence insight and meditation and reverse its recklessness hastiness avoidance loneliness and rejection um so yeah if if I had drawn the card and it was like this, then it'd be a little bit more of a negative thing, right? It'd be like, this is this is kind of more like feeling all by your lonesome. This one is like you're willingly withdrawing. Like this is a choice that like either you're making or that you might want to make in order to just recover, recover your social battery. Or it could be for a, a wide, a, a bunch of different reasons, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So let's go ahead and look also into the story so the white stag the druid and the white stag let's see what we got here i feel like this isn't an order of like alf this is an alphabetical order this is like no i actually don't know what order it's in <laughs> druid 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 it's kind of random this order Here we go, 105. Too far. There we go. The number of the arcana. I was thinking of that too, but this is all the way in the back. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not 100% sure, but here we go. Now you can see the art like kind of bigger now. It's kind of blown up. So here's what we got. Druids and the White Stag were part of the ancient Celtic tradition. Druids were men and women who were religious leaders, legal authorities, lore keepers, educators, medical professionals, and political advisors. They passed down their teachings orally, and it took many years of study to be considered a full druid. All druids were considered wise and very studious. In mythology, they often wielded magic and had the ability to predict the future. The White Stag is a magical creature of Celtic legend, sometimes considered a messenger from the underworld. It's an elusive animal, notably impossible to catch, and preternaturally good at evading capture. It features a number of Arturian myths, heralding the beginning of a quest, symbolizing mankind's perpetual spiritual journey. Ah, beginning of a quest. That's pretty interesting. One famous druid was the warrior uh, Bodhamal, a woman, the woman who raised the famous... Ooh, I have trouble with Irish names, so do forgive me, but um, it looks like it's pronounced Fionn Macumail, but I think... I heard that it's Finn, Finn McCool, right? Because he's also in Fate Grand Order. So <laughs> I think it's Finn McCool, right? Like, oh, nice. Thank you, Owen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, leader of the Fianna, which I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right either. So the story began when uh, Cool was killed and replaced by his rival, Gol McMorna. Cool's wife, Myrne, daughter of Druid Tag Magnuadat. I want to figure out how to pronounce these feared for their unborn son. She fled for safety uh, with Kul's sister, the warrior druidess uh, Badmal, and her companion, the fierce warrior, Liath Luachra. In their, secluded in their secluded home, Myrna gave birth to their son, Finn, and left them to be raised by two women. 
Bodmal and Liath Luahra taught their foster son Finn all they knew about the druid arts and warrior ways, accompanying him on many adventures until he grew old enough to confront Gol McMorna. Other famous druids include uh, Katbad, who predicted tragedy and fortune in equal turns. Another was Amurgen Guingil, a druid who was able to summon a magical storm and prevent enemy ships from landing. There was also Galizane, a group of female priestess druids who lived on a secluded island and had the ability to rouse the sea and, and, and the wind by their incantations, to turn themselves into any animal form, to cure diseases, and to foretell the future to those who consulted them. Everything circles back to fate. So that that turned out to be more so of like an outline of like druids and all of the great things that they've done, especially in kind of Celtic culture, which leads me to believe that like <laughs> it, it might be like uh, kind of I, I don't mean to, uh, I guess, tone down or, or kind of make fun of anything. But it's almost like saying that, like, if you withdraw and if you like get some time to yourself, you can essentially become a wizard <laughs> or like basically like you can become someone who is capable of very many great things right so this this seems to be a call for like more towards intro uh not introversion but introspection so it might not be like physically withdrawing yourself from like a, a group setting or anything like that it's not saying that like you should leave every discord that you're in you should leave every social media that you're in or anything like that but it could be more so of a mental thing of like if there's anything on your mind that is like weighing you down, like the, I'm also kind of like inserting a little bit of my own stuff here too, because recently I feel like social media and stuff like that has been weighing very heavy on my mind. But instead of like trying to limit or kind of wean yourself off of that, maybe it, it might just be like, okay, maybe this is time for me to go touch grass and maybe not put so much weight on those things that are weighing heavy on your mind. So that's a possible a possible um, interpretation, but if you have alternate ones, I would be happy to discuss further. Uh, wonder if the stag is something of a Ser Nuno stand-in, taking a long look at... Yeah, 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 you gotta take a Mike's hard look at yourself. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things to say. You just need a, a Mike's hard look at yourself. Ser Nuno sounds uh, familiar. It reminds me of the, the stag from um, Pokemon XY. But isn't that, it's also in Fate, isn't it? Sir Nunes was an ancient Celtic god who represented nature, flora, and fauna. Fauna mention and fertility. Ah, okay, okay. Celtic god of the forest. Oh, cool, cool, cool. It might be, it might be. If, if anything, like, because I'm a big fan when it comes to, like, mythology, folklore, that kind of stuff of, like, especially in places where, like, colonization, <laughs> like, or conquest kind of happen. There's almost always a sign of um, I'm like, sorry, look at myself. <laughs> Hashtag ad. <laughs> um, I like examples where you see a survival of like the quote unquote conquered culture. So, for example, like in in um, Mexican Aztec, that kind of like Nahuatl culture, um, a lot of the Aztecs are, are like their their descendants converted to Christianity, to Catholicism. Right. But there is still a figure known as like the um, Our Lady de, de Guadalupe, right? Who like, that, it's Mother Mary. It's Mary from like Christian tradition, right? But there are a lot of traits, traits of Guadalupe that harken back to like, uh, like Aztec folklore, Aztec religion. Um, or like the worshiping of like Lady Death, you know? So this, this might be one of those cases where like this white stag, it is a symbol. But it could also harken back to Sir Nunos. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess uh, in summary, it seems like this is a, a card telling you to, like, withdraw. Maybe not physically, maybe not, like, quite literally. But just consider, like, uh, what is weighing heavy on you and, like, withdraw. Uh, go, go touch some grass. <laughs> um, but let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you have any alternate interpretations. And I'd be happy to, to talk more on it. Uh, if you're satisfied, then we can also move on to the next person. But I'll pause here for a little bit. Let's let's see where we're at with like the ad break as well. And I'm gonna take a sip of water. Appreciate the insight. Yeah, I appreciate you asking for the for the reading. And drink some wawa.
My water bottle's dripping. <laughs> it's a glass bottle. Why is it like that? Okay. Okay, cool. So it looks like uh, it looks like you're you're good on this end. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a of a break. Let's do an ad break. But for those that are subscribed and don't get the ad break. I like doing this where we're just going to flip over some cards and you guys get to appreciate the art. If any of you weren't able to get into the queue, you can even pick one of these. Oh, I don't think I've ever drawn that card. That looks really cool. Um, you can also just pick one of these cards and, you know, give yourself your own tarot card reading. There we go. Yeah. Feel free. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start that ad break. Right. Wait. Can I not? <laughs> can I not do the ad break? Let me see. Let me see. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, we'll be back in about a minute or so. So, um, while I take a break, you guys also make sure you get you go hydrate, hydrate. Take a break. Tune into the the orc if you're not already a uh, dual <laughs> dual wielding us. Yeah, I'll be back. Okay, looks like we're back. Oh no, L, you're trying to get the star, huh? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sometimes it it just be like that, especially with the delay. But good try though, good try. You gave it the you gave it the old college try, and that's what counts. All right, let's see who is up next. Kuriketa, Kuriketa, it is your turn. Let's see what happens. Are we getting a reversal this time or not? <laughs> it's time. It is. By the way, I forgot to mention. Completely uh, unrelated to anything that's been going on, but uh, I did try to take a stab at playing Souls-like games off stream. It's fun to say Kuriketa. Yeah, I agree. It it like scratches the the. It's like an ASMR type itch of like. It's just very satisfying. Kurikata. Um I tried playing the crab game. I I tried playing um what is it? Another Crab's Treasure. It's really fun. It's really cute. I really like it. Here's the but. It's unfortunate, but I think there's a bug with it where um it just it's not optimized as good as as good as it can be. And um because of it, my computer tends to overheat and crash actually so i've actually been having a lot of fun playing the crab game another crab's treasure like i'm getting used to kind of like the idea of like souls like games where like it's it's a challenge right and it's supposed to like uh i know for folks like beans he loves playing elden ring and games like that because it gives him that little dopamine rush whenever whenever you win whenever you um finally beat the boss right I want to see if your CPU fan is installed backwards. That I don't know because I'm actually not much of a hardware person. Beans and his brother is the one who set up my PC for me. <laughs> Unless it solely faces away from the CPU. I don't... Maybe. Maybe. We can go check. We can check it out sometime soon. But um, it just crashes. Uh, Like, I'll be playing for about like an hour or so and it'll just go black. 
sometimes I'll still hear the audio too, but I there's nothing I can do. Like I can't uh bring up the task manager, I can't control alt delete, you know, anything like that. Can't delete system thirty two or nothing like that. So <laughs> So we'll we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Because uh Bean said that like he looked it up and he said that people have been like getting that same problem. So unless there's a bug fix for it, I don't I don't know. I don't know. So Okay, Kuraketa. Let's see, let's get a card from here. Let's get this card. Moment of truth. Whoop man, it's reversed. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Kuraketa. <laughs> Ain't no way. I'm so sorry. I just can't. One day the curse will be broken. One day it'll be broken. For those who don't know, <laughs> for some reason, there's just always reversals. But it's okay. Let's, let's see what this means. Let's see what this means, shall we? Uh, Kind of sounds more like a driver issue than overheating. Could still be, though. Yeah, I think that's another thing that Beans asked me to do is um update the driver. So we'll we'll see if that works as well. We'll see if that works. But thank you. Thank you. Thanks for... I, I appreciate when people are like, oh, it could be, could be this or that, you know? Okay, this is the Ace of Wands. I don't remember if you've you've gotten this one yet. Uh, feel free to remind me, Kuraketa. But this is a pretty cool one, pretty fire one, if I do say so myself. You know. <laughs> so the Ace of Wands. Usually, uh, any any card that has to do with like the Ace is the beginning of something, like the spark of something. New one for you. Cool, cool, cool. So let's look into it because I actually don't even know what the like myth surrounding it is. <clears throat> But the ace typically has to do with like the beginning of something or like the spark of something new. Um, here we have the wands. So the the wands, uh, like I said before, with um, with L's reading, wands has to do with fire. So your motivation, what's kind of keeping you going. Let me look at my cheat sheet again. Let's see. Drive, purpose, career, active and external creativity and ambition. So like basically your your reason for going, right? And this is the beginning of a new reason for going. Like maybe the the start of a new um, thing that is making you very passionate. Yeah, Ace is the start of something. Exactly. Um, however, if it's reversed, then it could be that something is preventing you from starting a, a new passion project or something new that will give you a kind of reinvigorated or restarted uh, ambition, right? Let's take a closer look at the imagery. So here we have a, a hand. They're holding what looks to be a brush. And then the tip of the brush has this really cool halo. It's surrounded by flowers. I'm not quite sure which flowers they are. At first glance, I thought they were roses, but they look a little bit different from roses. But there's also these plants over here. It kind of reminds me of... Um, what's the plant that makes tequila again? <laughs> like, um, agave? Is this? It kind of reminds me of agave because... Now we're having kind of like East Asian sim symbolism, but something about these flowers kind of reminds me of uh, of kind of uh, how do I say this? Like um, Central, Central and like South South American. So I'm not entirely sure. Reverse, uh, something stopping from starting. Yeah, so reverse can. Uh, there's plenty of different ways to like interpret a reversal. Um, reversal can either mean that like there's an excess of something or there's not enough of something. So it could be like um, usually this means that like, oh, there's uh, an excess of or sorry, something is preventing you from starting something new. Uh, however, it could also mean that like you may you might have so many ideas in your head about a new passion project that like it's become it's becoming like uh, there's no focus. You don't know which one to to focus on, you know, so. Let's see. So it looks like we have some plants here that remind me of agave, but I'm just noticing that like the plants have very sharp edges. And then here we also have like softer shapes, but they also have those leaves that are a little bit sharper. So it, it's almost like, um, you know, there's a little bit of adversity. There's a little bit of difficulty surrounding this idea of something new. Um, and then the, the main thing I haven't drawn attention to is the fire. This is huge bursting fire, which, like I said, if we think of what fire represents, uh, drive, purpose, career, creativity, and ambition. So 
like this is almost like the spark. This is like, you know, the the match that starts like a fire of like new ambition, newfound passion. If we turn it upside down, I think what's really cool is if you um when you turn some of these cards upside down, you can almost read them in a different way now. So um let's see. The brush tip is now at the top along with these beautiful flowers, but now the hand is at the bottom. So it's almost like here's how I'm gonna personally read this. The hand might be uh, symbolic of the execution of the idea, whereas this, the brush tip and the halo, is the idea itself. Right side up, this shows that like the, the hand that is executing the, this idea is in control. You're able to actually execute this idea. However, however, because it's upside down, it's almost as if you already have the idea and it's, it's like, you know, it's formed, you're, you want to pursue it, but the execution isn't there yet you might be kind of stuck with uh, the sense of perfectionism of like, it needs to be perfect when I start this, um, which is preventing you from actually doing the, the darn thing, right? So um, that that's how I'm reading it right now. I'm reading it as like, you have a lofty idea. It might even be a great idea, but something is preventing you from actually executing it, whether it's like a perfectionism or anxiety about it or like i said another one is like there might be so many ideas that you don't quite have a focus yet so um and that's what i that's how i'm reading the halo as well is like a sense of focus so um depending on you know depending on like which of these statements makes the most sense to you you might need some support with like finding that focus or just finding out how to like actually execute it hello phantom punk hello hello yeah, the, the queue is currently uh, closed, but we'll see at the very end of stream if I reopen it. And if I do, it might just be for one slot. But uh, I hope you, you're still down to, to just uh, chill or lurk or what have you. Um, otherwise, I, I totally get it. I totally get it. So yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's look at the cheat sheet and then let's look at the story that accompanies this card. Here we go. So, the Ace of Wands. Here we go. Oh, the Magic Paintbrush. I haven't heard of this one. The Ace of Wands represents an inspiration, a sudden creative force. The Magic Paintbrush embodies these qualities with passion and daring. The magical moment right before the ink hits the paper and all dreams and possibilities are within reach. Upright, it means excitement, creativity, a spark, growth, new beginnings. Reverse means delays, bad news, a creative block. Or wasted talent. Oh no, that one's kind of intense. From the hit game Oblivion. Is it from? I've 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 not played. <laughs> I would like to, if I have the time. Oblivion. Okay. The magic paintbrush. Let's look into it, shall we? <laughs> There's a quest with it. Ah, cool, cool. Trying to find it. The magic paintbrush. Oh, there we go. 141, all the way in the back. Here we go. This art, the art looks so awesome blown up like this. So this is the magic paintbrush. China, Chinese folktale. Okay. There was once a very poor man named Ma Liang who loved to draw very much. One night he had a dream that an old man gave him a magical paintbrush and asked him to help people. When he awoke, the magic paintbrush lay beside him. What, uh, whatever Ma Liang drew with the magic paintbrush came into being, and he used its powers to benefit the struggling people around him. He used the brush to paint a river next to a dry field and to draw food for the poor. Quickly his fame grew and everyone was grateful to Ma Liang. In the same village lived a rich man who soon came to covet the magical brush. He didn't uh, want to help the people, but instead wanted to paint gold and make himself even richer. In the dark of the night, he sent his servants into Ma Liang's home. And while Ma Liang was sleeping, they stole his brush. The next day, the rich man painted many pictures uh, of riches beyond belief. But no matter how many he drew, none of the images would come to life for him. Frustrated, the rich man ordered the guards to capture Ma Liang and bring him forward. When Ma Liang arrived, the rich man demanded that he draw for him or face punishment. The quiet Ma Liang smiled and agreed. He asked the rich man uh, what he would like, and the rich man said he wanted a mountain of gold. 
So Ma Liang painted a mountain, but he painted it in the middle of a vast sea. The rich man then demanded a large boat to sail the ocean with enough room in its hull to carry all the gold. So Ma Liang painted a huge sailboat. The rich man and all of his cronies got in it and set sail. But when they got halfway to the mountain, Ma Liang painted a wicked storm and the boat capsized and all men were lost at sea. From that day on, Ma Liang and all the people of the village lived happy and peaceful lives. <laughs> That's kind of dark. Like, <laughs> I, I get what the, you know, it's it's almost like the Midas touch where it's like, oh, don't be too greedy. Right? <laughs> but there's something about like, <laughs> about Ma Liang just like killing all of them. <laughs> With the magic brush, that's like, oh, that's not quite what I expected. But at the same time, you know, the message is there. <laughs> the lesson, murder your enemies, exactly, <laughs> with a magic paintbrush. You see, uh, Miss Frizzle with her magic school bus would have done the same. <laughs> but yeah, so that that's the basic story. It's like this spark of creativity, but it's almost... <laughs> Oh no, don't cry. <laughs> but the story also comes with uh it's kind of like the first card that we drew for L where it's like it's almost like a cautionary tale of like yes, use your creativity, but also like uh <laughs> and it's kind of basic, but it's like don't use it for bad things, but it's almost like it almost seems like it, it itself could be another cautionary tale of like um kind of like knowing your limits. Um and maybe even questioning your your why right because the the thing that separated ma liang from the the rich person is that like oh i want to make myself richer excuse me while ma liang was like oh i want to help the the people in need right so it could be that like with whatever it is that you are unable to start with this passion project or with this new ambition that you're unable to start maybe the thing that is preventing you from starting it is your why it could be that at the moment you don't have a why or it could be like it could be something that to you makes sense. But in the wider scheme of things, it might be like. Not as uh, I guess. Not a, I don't know, like I'm thinking of like, oh, I want to like work a certain job because it'll give me more money and more money means like you get more security, like you get more financial security. Right. But. It could be like in the wider world, it's like, oh, are you then are you just kind of doing it for yourself or are you going to use this money for like uh, something that goes beyond you? Right. Even though, like for me personally, it's like, well, yeah, money would be good to, to feed my own mouth and then maybe I can focus on feeding other mouths. Who knows? <laughs> but that's kind of what I'm getting from this. So that checks out. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Right. Where it's like. Even something that could be seen as selfish, like, is it really selfish? Because you're still supporting yourself. So, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Let's hope that next time it's a, it's not a reversal, but every card, even with a reversal, has some kind of good message behind it. So, yeah, let me know. Let me know. And then uh, I'm going to take a sippy break. It's something I've thought of since I left med school. I just don't know what to do or what I'll end up doing. Ah, okay. So just like this general feeling of aimlessness, right? So therefore, this card almost seems like a, like you, you, the, the good thing is that you have ideas. I think that's what this card is implying that like you do have ideas. You're not completely lost at sea or completely just like not knowing what it is that you want. You do have ideas in your head. It's just more of like, okay, well, which one do I choose then? And I think for that, for that, that's where the whole like think of your why comes in. Think of your your reason, your your reason for for going into what you want to go for. So if it's like if you don't want to quite do like medical school, but you might want to do something. I'm, I'm just going to throw out names there <laughs> like, uh, like architecture versus art versus biology versus something else. Take the passion filled route, not the monetary route. Yeah, that's an, that's a really good interpretation as well. I like that. I like that Sufuri. It could be something where like you might be thinking of like, well, this is going to be like. This, this is going to be a bit of a tangent, but I have been hearing from uh, at least here in Bear America that like tech jobs are usually the go to's, right? Like people 
like go into computer science they go into that because it's almost like well tech jobs are a given like technology is rapidly improving every day so they need people for it but now it's be according at least to to beans because he kind of works in tech it's starting to become oversaturated inundated so to speak so now there's lots of people who are graduating with computer science degrees and they don't they don't have a job which is like unfortunate and like i said this is just in my part of bear america this isn't meant to be like oh no don't go into tech anybody being cubs is like if you're in tech don't do it don't do it they got their airpods on they can't hear us <laughs> that's that's not what i'm saying it's just like this is what i heard from other sources aka beans that like you might be going into computer science because you think it might be like uh you're you're for sure gonna get a job right um but you might be doing it at the expense of something that you're really interested in that is really like your passion right in which case this might be hinting that like maybe take the chance with that passion instead um this and i'll say this is a bit of a, a um like i said this is personal to me and like um it, it's not going to be the case for everyone else but basically that's what i i took the the route that is more of like what i'm actually interested in so like art history history as opposed to like nursing which like many filipino parents would like much prefer that you go into something more secure like nursing but for one my parents were like yeah go ahead like do what makes you happy right <laughs> so so i went for that and um and it it worked out for me but that's not to say that like it's going to work out for everyone else right so you know take with that as you will problem with the passion for me is that i don't think i have a passion or at least i don't notice it ah okay okay and that is a bit of a deeper question that like i don't know how i i would be able i like it's it's a bit hard to help other people with finding their passion it might just be a, a matter of like trying out a variety of different things um fellow passionless individual i know for me what helped me is um once again this isn't always the most accessible but when i was in college i switched my major a lot um but taking you know how they at least here in bear america they kind of force you to take general education classes like you have to take a math class even if you're a history major you have to take a history class even if you're a science major you have to take science you have to take humanities blah 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 that actually did have that actually did help me find other things that i ended up being really passionate about like um i don't know if i would have gotten into art history if it weren't for those classes because like I actually came in as a psychology major <laughs> and then I didn't like it. So I changed to graphic design and then I hated it and <laughs> I changed to history and I didn't hate it. But then I took an art history class and I like that more. So. Um, but then again, like I said, I don't know if that's accessible for you, if you're able to take like, uh, I don't know, community college or junior college classes or even. Not to sound like a shill, but like check out Skillshare or <laughs> like. I don't know. I feel like there's plenty of uh, resources of just like dabbling in different things. Like for me, like is unironically Skillshare helped me like find some art stuff that I didn't think I would be into. But also just dabble in like YouTube and see if like you you never know what you might be into. Like um like like I said, my I'm very humanities based. That's why I'm dropping a lot of like humanities stuff, like history, art history. But who knows? It could be like astronomy microbiology uh <laughs> trying to think of what else people are into computer science accounting <laughs> so yeah it's it's harder to kind of like advise on that but um but at the very least this is saying that like there there are some options for you to explore babinka's skill share it's more like shill share am i right fellers <laughs> You'll try thank you yeah yeah and you know what like no no rush i know it seems kind of like scary to be aimless um for an extended amount of time but, but I, got, I got hope in you i got hope in you all right so <laughs> Make a <front> <laughs> not the question mark not the what is she yapping about <laughs> all right i'm gonna take a little bit of a break um am i able to send out another ad Let me see. I think I am. Actually, I'll just take a, a short, short BRB break without the ad, and then we'll we'll come back with uh, who's next.
Actually, let me pause for a second. Okay, I need a Babinka stare emote for, for dad jokes. You could use the question mark one. <laughs> Babinka bear Skillshare, use code BOSH for 10% off at checkout. Oh my gosh. You guys know me so well. Too well, maybe. <laughs> okay, uh, I was just chatting with Beans. He's back. He's back. Um... But I am going to take a little bit more of an extended break just to rest my voice. And then we'll get back with who is next? Who's next? Oh, cool. We got Vite Height. So, um, yeah, let's do one minute and then we'll, we'll get to a reading for Vite Height. All right, we back. Woo! Cool. Me and Beans were just talking about what to have for foodums. Let me get in that mac and cheese. <laughs> oh, speaking of Beans, hello, welcome, new Beans. Welcome, welcome. We're doing some tarot card readings. If you came here to, to get a tarot card reading, you love Tocino? Oh, man. <laughs> nice, nice. Tocino mac and cheese? Oh! Where is the Tocino mac and cheese? I it's funny I didn't say Tocino, but that does that does sound like a good idea. <laughs> no, I just we just got like the Trader Joe's mac and cheese, but um, yeah. So the the queue is unfortunately closed for now. Um, we'll see if I am able to reopen it after I'm done with the the next two readings. But 
Um, I also want to save up with my, my voice. But yeah. Hello, Bolari13. Welcome, welcome. I just ate Sinigang last night. That sounds so good. It's been a minute since I had Filipino food. I am Filipino, but uh, I live with my partner. So, uh, you know, I, I only get Filipino food when I visit the fam bam. So... <laughs> Tocino mac and cheese sounds delicious, right? Doesn't it, Mega Bronson? I'm just suggesting it sounds so good. Let's let's do it. Let's the next time. I you know what? I have Tocino mix, so very possible I I can make it. <laughs> tocino spam also sounds really good. I'm not feel it, but I do enjoy Tocino. Nice, nice. It's just really good. It's so flavorful, right? I can pack you beans food in the future. Yo, that'd be amazing. Also, I'd be down to hang out one of these days, by the way, like IRL. We, hang, we hung out with Mr. Rage the other, uh, I think, earlier this week. So, Oh, no, uh, sorry, New Beans. So my partner's name is Beans. Beans the Bear. So, <laughs> Hi, Omana. Hello, hello. Yeah, sorry, sorry. We, it's okay. We might open up the queue in due time. <laughs> we have two readings. We have one for White Height and one for... Um, uh, who's the last one? I think it's Mega Bronson. So uh, after that, we'll we'll see if we can reopen it though. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, my partner's name is is Beans. Beans the Bear. But uh, thank you, Mega Bronson, for shouting him out. <laughs> he was playing Elden Ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's actually right next to me right now. So yeah. Um, but thanks everyone. It looks like a bunch of people just came in at the moment. I'm gonna do two two readings right now, and then we'll see if we can reopen that queue. Uh, but if you if you gotta dip out. You know, no worries. If you want to lurk, that's also fine. But yeah, we're going to now do a reading for Vite Height. He's a fellow bear, by the way. You guys should check him out. He's a fellow Randonite, fellow bear PNG tuber. I know you've, he's been playing a, a big variety of games lately, too. Like, um, I know you've been playing the falls, the falls outs. <laughs> So you you got like a wide variety of bear VTubers, of bear PNG tubers. <laughs> yeah, New Beans, are you a New Jeans fan? That would be a really cool name, actually. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, let's let's shuffle one more time. There's a surprising amount of bears in the VTuber scene. Yeah, there is. There is. Me and Vitehide are both part of a Discord group with like a whole bunch of bear VTubers. And there's so many. Um, like there's a lot of bears that are space themed, which I think is really cute. Um, and then there's a few who are like grizzly bears. We have a few polar bears. I think I might be the only sun bear in the group, but I don't think I'm the only sun bear VTuber, PNG tuber, period. We also have one sloth bear. <laughs> and I think a red panda, which I know isn't a bear, but, <laughs> but you know, who are we to judge? Actually, now that I think about it, I don't... Vite Height, do you remember if there's any pandas in that group? You don't need to, like, out them or anything, but I actually don't remember. They snuck in. <laughs> like, hey, you look you look bare enough. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and draw a card for Vite Height. Actually, this one stuck out, like, immediately, so let's do that one. Not off the top of my head. Yeah, right? I feel like I haven't seen a panda VTuber yet. All right, here we go. Ooh, the High Priestess. Let me know if you got this one. I, I don't remember if I gave you a reading before, but this is exciting to watch. Oh, yay! I'm glad. I'm glad, I'm glad. So we got the High Priestess. Uh, by the way, for those who just entered, we are using a deck called the Tarot of the Divine, which mixes tarot imagery with like folklore and mythology. And this is the High Priestess. We've drawn this one before. Um, it's a major arcana card, which means that it's uh, it's like a blinking red light of like this. This might be something really big to pay attention to. What, whereas there's also something called minor arcana, which is more so like day to day. Like, think about this, maybe <laughs> you've gotten one before. I forgot what it was. I just remember that uh, during the night that you only pulled reverse cards. Oh, no. Oh no, I know there's some days where I only pull reverse cards. There's some days where I only pull like major arcane. <laughs> it's been a good mix so far. So we have the high priestess, and um this is Shahrazad, by the way. Uh, hello, Pocket Cat 515. Hello, welcome, welcome. So this is Shahrazad. She's from um is it a thousand and one Arabian Nights? 
Arabian Nights. <laughs> and um, her whole thing is that she actually sets up the 1001 Arabian Nights. Like the story with Scheherazade is that, um, and I, I might butcher the story, but we also have the companion book to, uh, to correct any mistakes. <laughs> but <laughs> the story with her is that she basically has been kidnapped by a powerful uh, monarch. I don't remember if he's like a king or a governor or something. And I uh, see my my memory is failing. I feel like he said that he'll either kill her or like, you know, just do something very unfortunate to her. Um, but she's able to uh, postpone. Like when that's going to happen to her by telling stories. So, you know, on one day, the, the person is like, oh, I'm going to kill you today or I'm going to I, I don't know, like make you my wife uh, without your permission, that kind of stuff. Um, and she says, no, 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 no. How about you do it once I finish the story? Uh, but the, the thing that she's doing is that, like, she keeps on, like, telling more and more and more stories to kind of, like, uh, postpone that time. Uh, so she's using, basically, she's using a lot of resourcefulness to kind of uh, get out of her, her predicament. So that's, that's the story of Scheherazade. Like, very, very briefly, there's, uh, we can look at the companion book as well. The High Priestess is a major arcana card, which is usually associated with uh cuz she's not, it's not necessarily the magician it's it's um it it is like a bit of like resourcefulness i'm i'm kind of blanking out here but we can also <laughs> we can also look at we can do what we do best and just kind of like look at the imagery here we do see that Scheherazade is this female figure she is kind of like reclining here she doesn't look too stressed out, despite the fact that like she's in this predicament, right? But she's also holding a storybook, kind of like imp like kind of hinting at like her role in the story of like she is the storyteller. She is the one that's kind of in control of her fate, even though she's like kind of in a predicament. She also has the moon above her, which the moon has a lot of symbolism all throughout art and art history. But the moon in general is uh usually it it is represented. It's symbolic of like the unconscious of your emotions of your intuition so because the moon is above her it's almost like saying that she's like she's kind of in command of of her intuition of her emotions let's see what else she seems relaxed she doesn't seem worried i think that's that's what i'm noticing too from this is that like she does have her hand over her face just a little a little touch of like uncertainty but otherwise she doesn't seem too panicked so let's, uh, to help re-jog my memory, let's go ahead and look at the smaller companion book and then we'll look at the bigger companion book. So the High Priestess. Because I was thinking of the Magician. This is, that's, that's not the same thing. The Magician and the High Priestess are like right next to each other. <laughs> I think that's why I confused them. So yeah, this is Scheherazade. This is uh, from Turkey. It's an Arabic folktale. The high priestess is a keeper of vast knowledge. With a story for every situation, Scheherazade asks the listener to focus on what their subconscious tells them, encouraging them to form their own conclusion. Her power is vast yet subtle, and her answers are always mysterious. Hi, people bees. Hello, hello. We're doing a couple of uh, tarot readings at the moment. Get your stickers. Oh, yeah, for those who are new, we have uh, something called the Scratch and Sniff a Sticker Redeem. It's only one point. And it's just a nice little like check in redeem. So feel free to, to check those out if you're new. Uh, OK, so upright, this card means wisdom, intuition, dreams, meandering and enigma. Enigma. Ba <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Ligma. <ba. laughs> but basically, uh, this this does kind of pair well with the magician in terms of like resourcefulness. But this is more so like using uh not not just pulling resources out of nowhere but going into your own brain <laughs> <Michael Bronson. laughs> um pulling out of your own brain your own wisdom like uh your own lived experiences to kind of help you with whatever it is that you are struggling with or that you're dealing with at the moment oh yeah and it says dreams and intuition like i said the moon is typically associated with like emotions intuition um, but it seems like, it seems like, uh, how do I say this? It feels like the magician is more of like using stuff like research and like going from your external resources to help you with the problem. This one is more internal. 
this is like pull from your own experiences and pull from your own um like what what your gut is telling you in order to kind of help you with whatever situation or whatever whatever you're struggling with at the moment so next up let's go ahead and read the story of Shahrazad. i think she's actually one of the first ones there's a little bit of a story yeah she's the first one actually because yeah she kind of like sets up the entire thousand and one uh arabian nights all right you guys ready for some storytelling this this picture is beautiful too look at her she's 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 chilling there was once a sultan who or you know what let's read the title shahrazad and the 1001 nights this is turkey arabic folktale there was once a sultan who upon his death divided his domain between his two sons Shariar and Shah Zaman, and into two kingdoms. The brothers married two beautiful women and left to rule their respective domains. Although they lived far apart, they were still the best of friends and visited, visited each other often. One time, when Shah Zaman was visiting Shariar, Shariar noticed how unhappy his brother was. When asked the reason, Shah Zaman confessed that he had caught his wife cheating on him with another man, and in his rage, he had killed both his wife and the other man. Oh, jeez. <laughs> now suspicious of women, Shah Zaman discovered that Shariar's wife was also cheating on Shariar. Shariar was furious. He ordered the execution of his wife and uh, from then on married a new woman each night and killed her each morning before she could betray him. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, yeah, it, I guess that was the, the thing is that he's killing, he's killing women. The kingdom trembled in fear of Shariar's wrath until Shahrazad, the vizier's daughter, volunteered to become Shariar's wife. When her night came, she cleverly asked Shariar for one last wish, to see her younger sister, Dunyazad. Upon arrival, Dunyazad prompted her sister beforehand, begged Shahrazad for a story. By the light of the moon, Shahrazad told a story so witty and interesting that when dawn broke and the story was only half done, Shariar allowed her to live another night to finish her story. In this way, Shahrazad spent 1,001 nights telling stories that were romantic, epic, moralistic, ridiculous, and righteous. Through these stories, Shariar forgot his hate, became, compassion became a compassionate monarch again, and relearned how to love with Shahrazad. He taught these lessons to his brother, Shah Zaman, who also forgave and eventually married Dunyazad. So there we go. Like I said, she, she's kind of pulling these stories out of her own brain. She's also kind of uh, improv it, so to speak. She's also kind of just... Uh, um, it goes into what I was saying, right? That she's not necessarily... Like, she might have been researching in the libraries of the palace, right? To, like, create these new stories. But the implication is also that she's kind of pulling it from her own creativity, from her own experiences, uh, just from within, rather than, like, an external resource. So that's, you know, that's another way to kind of read this card. This has really been helping me with my readings. <laughs> Definitely a fitting avatar for the high priestess. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I've also done some reading on the card. It would suggest a situation either ongoing or approaching that will be unclear will require that I follow my intuition and gut feelings to overcome or make the most of it. Yeah, wonderfully said, Vite Height. So yeah, like this is very much like trust in your gut feeling. You can do extra research depending on what it is that you that is troubling you or that like you're kind of facing at the moment. But otherwise, this is basically saying like if you're at an impasse, choose your gut feeling. And I know that like for certain personalities like myself, trusting my gut feeling is like, no, I need a resource or I need like a second opinion. And this one is saying like, no, 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 no. You might just need to trust yourself. You just need to trust yourself at this point. I think that's a bit of an overreaction to getting cheated on. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, you know, like I understand the 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 crime of like the the passionate crime, you know, of like, oh no, there's been a moida. There's been a murder. Thank you for following Pocket Cat 515. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying things so far. So yeah, I, I understand, you know, like there's the crime of passion. But then uh doing it to to many, you know, like to women that you don't even know, killing them, a little bit of an overreaction, just a teensy bit. Guys, can I eat all the tomatoes? <laughs> you guys, you you got tomatoes? <laughs> Oh man, yes, you you certainly can eat all the tomatoes raw. <laughs> but yeah, so 
Let me know if you have any questions, White Height, about this card, the High Priestess, about the Tale of Scheherazade, and uh, yeah, stuff like that. Otherwise, I'll take a little bit of a break. Eat all the tomatoes. And here's what I like to do during my break. I'm going to draw a couple more cards. If you are subscribed during the, the ad break, you can go ahead and just like look at the cards. And if you don't uh, end up in the, what's it called? The queue. Oh, th there's a lot of reversals. What the heck? <laughs> You can, uh, you know, you can pick a card and kind of like give yourself your own reading. But if you are not, uh, if you're not uh, um, subbed, then um, hopefully the ad break won't be too intrusive. It's an interesting one to ponder on. I'm glad. I'm glad. How is everyone? Yeah. Feel free to talk amongst yourselves in the chat. I'm going to go ahead and put an ad break on at the moment uh, just for a minute. But we'll be back. You won't be missing out on anything. Because I'm going to hydrate right now. <laughs> Time to hydrate. Right, let's see if the ad's working. There you go. All right, I'll be back. Oh, cool. The ad's done. Cool. Yeah, and thank you, Safuri, for uh, for helping with the, the driver thing. I'm going to check it out after stream because I do want to play Crab Game. I don't know if I want to stream it because I'm still a beginner with Souls-like games, but I, I at least want to play it. <laughs> so, yeah. Cool. And thanks for letting me know that the ad is done. Good old water. Yep, 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 yep. Safuri, you got, a, you got an FF14 ad? Or are you talking about what I did last night with like, I'm like have you guys played a uh, critically acclaimed MMORPG? <laughs> Okie doke. Got one? Yeah. Ah, I see, I see. Critically acclaimed MMORPG. Is it for the new one, the the Dawn Trail expansion? <laughs> we'll see if I end up uh well I'm super behind on the on the MSQ, so we'll see, we'll see. But okay, so that was White Heights reading. I think next up is Mega Bronson. It's probably the Mountain Dew ad. I forgot about that one. Reminded me of your ref last night. Oh no, they're they're watching me. They're I'm being surveyed. Balara thirteen, get thanks for getting your your sticker. Each one of the sniff stickers is based off a Filipino treat. Uh, you just got the taho one. Taho! Um, it's, uh, it's like silken tofu with... Um, it's like in a sweet syrup. I've been observed. I'm being watched. Do I cut watermelon today too? If, it's, if you are in the northern hemisphere like I am and it's very hot right now, yes. <laughs> I would say yes. Cut some watermelon. It's nice, crunchy water, right? Mega Bronson, did you try to put an, uh, uh, a link? Or did you accidentally not put a space after your period? Because uh, I see, I just see censorship. You're Canadian. Is it hot in, uh, in Canada right now where you're at? I tried a link. Ah, so sorry. No, no links allowed. You can put it in the Discord if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's hot, but I'm inside with AC. You have two blankets on. I've done that before where I kind of cancel out. Like, 
it's it's really hot right now, but I usually have a fan on me. It's actually directly behind me. But then sometimes it gets too cold, so you gotta you gotta cancel it out instead of you know turning the fan off. <laughs> oh, it's the FF fourteen clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. All right. So, Mega Bronson, I I believe you're up next. Let's go ahead and do next. Yep, Mega Bronson. So this is the last one in the queue. I think I might have enough energy to do one more reading after Mega Bronson, but uh, whoever wants that reading, you guys are gonna have to type really fast. <laughs> uh, cause I'm I'm then gonna reopen the queue, let one person in, and that's that's kind of it. Cause. I want to save my voice. I do also have a Digimon Adventure watch along later tonight, and I want to save my voice for that too. Which, if any of the folks who just entered, if you guys are interested in, in joining in on that, I'll, I'll put my Discord in the chat. So yeah. All right, let's go ahead and do this reading for Mega Bronson. Oh man, this this new batch of not new this uh the upcoming batch of like Digimon episodes we're gonna watch today. It's a uh, part of my favorite. Some 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 of those episodes are my favorite, <laughs> and it is the Digimon Adventure series from 1999, and it's it's the dubbed version. So uh, I should probably add that in before people are like, oh, I want to join, and then you find out like, oh, it's the dub. I hate the dub. I I love the dub, but <laughs> you know, people's mileage may vary. The dub just has so many zingers, so many like kind of unnecessary like side conversations. I love it. We love the dub in this house. It's true. It's true. Okie doke. Let's go ahead and get a card for Mega Bronson. I think this one popped out immediately. All right. Ooh, we've drawn this one before, too. It's another Major Arcana. We keep getting Major Arcana cards. So, Mega Bronson, you got Justice. Justice. I kind of forgot the tale that kind of accompanies this one, but uh, let's look. Let's start by looking at the imagery. So here we have Justice. <laughs> Where is she? Where are the drugs? <laughs> Justice. So we have a, a male presenting figure, very central in this composition. Uh, this work is actually pretty symmetrical. Now that we're, where's your trigger bad? <laughs> um, they look like they're in Korean or at least like East Asian clothing. To me, it looks Korean because of the uh, this like hat thing over here. Justice. Where, where's the catnip? <laughs> This figure is also wearing, um, yeah, it, it kind of looks Korean, but it also looks, uh, maybe because the card is called Justice, but they, they also just seem very regal in a way, like royalty. They're also right in front of what looks like it could be either be like some kind of fancy government building or a temple. I actually don't know for sure. They're holding a sword in one hand and in the other one, it looks kind of like a medallion. I know it's not easy to see with my camera, but um, they're holding those two things. And they're also standing on top of what kind of looks like the yin yang symbol. So, going off of the fact that the it's also called justice, um, it seems like this is a judge of some sort. Like he is the one that kind of doles out the justice. So, um, especially like with the with the sword, it's almost like they're also enforcing justice. The medallion, I don't know too much about, but we can also look at the companion book to find out a little bit more. Um, the fact that he's standing on the yin yang symbol also kind of implies that like it's he who is uh, deciding what is like light and dark or in this case evil and good. Let's see the story for this card is basically about Korean agents that would cut down corrupt officials. Ah cool there you go so quite literally acting as a force of justice so probably holding the symbol of the emperor king a mark of authority. Ah so this is almost saying that like it's not just like some random dude that's doling out the justice. He um either either is ordained by like a higher power such as like uh, a, a deity or even like their their monarch um he has been judged himself before so therefore 
he is able to judge others. Like he has, uh, he's shown that he's capable of doing that. It's Joseon era. Oh, cool, cool, cool. I love learning about details like that because my knowledge of like Korean history and culture isn't like as extensive as say like Filipino culture or like American history, ancient civilization. So I love learning about that. Thank you, thank you. I have no clue how this ties into what I was thinking for this reading. Um, let, if you want to let us know like what you were thinking, you can. But let's also do what we did with the other readings. Let's look at the companion book and then let's also look at the story that accompanies it. Oh, no, I keep I accidentally <laughs> pressed my 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 stream deck. Let's go through it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Justice. Your last name is very Korean. Oh, man. Is it like. Well, no, I, I don't want to dox you. <laughs> Because isn't like, you know, Park is like a super Korean name. It somehow got a decent bit of Korean history. Ah, cool. Very nice. Cool to know, Nuveens. So this is, and forgive my mispronunciation. Am um, Amhaing um Eosa. This is Korea, Korean legend. Um, Justice's power wielded with both intelligence and impartiality. It is making decisions with all of the facts and accepting the consequences of any choice made. It is punishment of the corrupt and promotion of the deserving. So harmony, balance, equality, virtue, honor, bias, false accusations, intolerance, abuse, and dishonesty if it's reversed. You're not wrong. <laughs> well, the good thing is that Kim is so, you know, uh, prevalent that like, you know, it's it's like saying like, oh, my, my, if you're like American, you could be like, oh, my last name is Smith. And it's like, do you know how little that narrows it down? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say that Mega Bronson, like Smith. <laughs> yeah, my name's John Smith. <laughs> but yeah, so with this, it also, I, I, I'm paying attention to this part um, where it says accepting the consequences of any choice made. Good thing is the streamer didn't dox me, the viewer did. <laughs> I was also going to say John Smith or win for Vietnamese. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or like De Los Santos or Santos or like any of like the Del uh, names <laughs> for Filipinos. Okay, so that we we have some kind of educator, right? Like he is doling out the the judgment, but also accepting the choices made. That one is like really standing out to me. Because it's like, oh, this makes it seem like you have to make a certain choice and you kind of have to, like, be okay with that choice. So let's see. What tale accompanies this? This is Am Haing Eosa. Right here, 95. 95. There we go. All right. I really love seeing the art like blown up like this. It's it's really pretty. Okay. The Amhang Osa or the secret royal inspectors were real historical figures appointed by the king with the power to punish the corrupt and promote the deserving. They would secretly enter provinces and use their undercover identities to investigate government officials. They would then reveal themselves with their mapai, the medallions that prove their dominion. Ah, so Sufuri, you were right. While real, they were popularized in dramas and literature even during the Joseon period. And there you go. So New Beans was also uh, helpful with pinpointing the uh, the era. Um, and became mytholo mythologized. Mythologized. There you go. One of the most famous tales is the story of Chun Hyung. In this tale, the handsome uh, Yi Mong Ryong fell in love and married the beautiful Chun Hyung. Unfortunately, he had to move to Seoul to train to become an Amhang Eosa, just as a new government official, the vile Pyon, took control of the area. Chun Hyung vowed to wait patiently for, for Yi Mong Ryong and gave him a ring to remember her by. But when he had gone, the greedy Pyon attempted to add the lovely Chun Hyung to his courtesan party. Chun Hyung tried to rebuff Pyon's advances, which enraged the pompous man, and he imprisoned her. Meanwhile, Yi Mong Ryong passed the Amhang Osa test and secretly returned to the village to find the mess Pyon had created. Yi Mong Ryong 
remained undercover as a beggar and learned about Pion's crimes, such as neglecting his duties, throwing lavish parties, and generally abusing his power to terrify the populace. Then as Pion's birthday celebration, uh, just as the government official was about to punish the loyal Chun Hyung, Yi Mon Yong revealed himself to be a secret Amhang Eosa and condemned Pion for all his wrongdoing. Pion was then deposed and a new and just official given the position. Meanwhile, Chun Hyung, happy to be rescued, did not initially recognize Yi Mong Ryong and rejected his affections. It was only when he returned her ring to her that she realized who he was. Chun Hyung was overjoyed and the couple lived happily ever after. Oh, cool. I had no idea about this story. That's oh, hello, Omoda. Uh, you love this story? They did a drama adaptation in 2005. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Might be worth checking out. I, I've never watched a K-drama. <laughs> so I, I would be interested. Anti-cap, anti-authority. <laughs> well, there you go. So, um, Mega Bronson, you said that like initially this didn't really apply to what you were thinking about with the reading. So there, there are a lot of different ways that this could go, right? Depending on whether you're thinking about like life stuff, relationships, uh, your Overwatch, like <laughs> your Overwatch gaming, right? So, um, let me see. Let me see how I can interpret this. It's called Delightful Girl Chung Hyung. Ooh. Let me look it up in another window. Eh. Sorry, my, my book keeps on hitting the mic. Delightful Girl Chung Hyung. Oh, this is so cute. And it, it has the 2005, like, I don't know, like, touch to it. I don't know. It reminds me of, like, I did watch J-dramas back in the day, and, like, this is <laughs> this is reminding me of that. Something about, like, the production quality. It's kind of cute. I love her hair. They're super cute. Let me tell you what I was thinking. Yeah, give it to me, brother. The OST slabs? Oh, man. I don't know why this is reminding me of, like, the one J-drama that I used to watch, like, in my 20s. Oh, what was it called? It was about a, uh, not a, he wasn't a Yakuza. It was like, he was a biker, like a biker punk. And he was taking care of his sister because I think both their parents had passed away. So, of course, it's like dramatic, right? Um, but the whole thing is that like, oh, he he's like a form. Oh, he was like a former biker punk, but he was also, I think, a mangaka. It deleted what you were typing. Oh, no. Wait, use your arrow keys, because sometimes that happens to me is that like it looks like it deletes, but then it like it's just hiding with the arrow keys for some reason. Oh, my God, I'm trying to remember what this J drama was called. It was. a. Uh... What if I just what if I just Google it? <laughs> um, J drama, biker, gang, mangaka. No, not manga. Manga ka. No, it's not that one. No. Yasuko to Kenji. Yeah, yeah, it's Yasuko to Kenji. This is 2008. Oh my god. This is the one J drama that I remember like watching, but I don't remember if I checked out any K dramas. I'm feeling very giving tree. Soul's tired and uh, like I'm going nowhere, starting to get anxiety of like life FOMO. Oh no. Okay. So basically like this feeling of aimlessness. So I could see why like getting a card like this is very like, huh? <laughs> let me let me think a little bit of what what that could mean because what what i'm kind of getting from this is like it would be nice to have a position like this guy who kind of like no <laughs> starting to get anxiety of like like life fomo I, I guess, like, what I was thinking is um, it'd be nice to have, like, an official position like this, right? Of, like, some kind of, like, position of power that, kind, that can kind of help with, like, this feeling of aimlessness. 
he said feeling very giving tree like you're giving too much of yourself so was tired and i'm going nowhere <clears throat> let me let me sip some water you're not aimless though ah that's why you're like huh <laughs> Oh, okay. I guess, hmm. Feel like everything I'm working for is going nowhere. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not aimless. Burnt out? Kind of? Is it kind of like feeling that burnout? I've been feeling that a little too, brother. <laughs> Anytime I hear Justice Royal Inspector, I can only think of the Fox guy from Thunderbolt Fantasy. Do I know which one is Th Thunderbolt Fantasy? Let's look it up. Oh my god, that it's the puppet anime. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it looks really cool. My lunch I opted for a half an avocado instead of tomatoes. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that. So going back to Mega Bronson, you you're feeling like uh, a little bit of burn Ooh, <laughs> a little bit of uh, burnout. Oh, I just got some mac and cheese. Thank you, beans. <laughs> um burnout plus this idea of justice. This one's a toughie. This one's a bit of a toughie. Let's let's look back at this one. Harmony, balance, equality, virtue, and honor. Maybe the cards have something else in store for you to focus on. That's still a pretty big thing, though, of, like, feeling burnt out. Because then, like, we, we get into a deeper conversation of, like, well, burnout usually comes from, like, feeling like you are having kind of, like, a thankless job. Or, like, you're doing something and, like, there's not enough um, pay, pay off for it. So if, if we're thinking about this idea of, like, harmony, justice almost implies a right or a wrong. Because I, I hate kind of like defaulting to this, but it almost seems like it's saying like, think about your why, like your why it is that you're doing the things you do and why it is that like, if you're not getting any payoff from it, that it feels so disheartening, right? So um, if I apply this to say like streaming, am I, uh, let's say that like, I feel, I feel disheartened because like a stream ends up uh, bombing, like it. Like, I only get, like, two viewers, and, like, it, it just doesn't feel like a, a good stream, right? But then the question becomes, like, oh, am I streaming because I want those views? Or am I streaming because I legitimately enjoy it, and I, I enjoy what I'm doing? So, you know, that I feel like that kind of goes into it, of, like, knowing knowing the why. Not just the why of why you're doing it, but also the why of, like, why you feel burnt out. Because it's not to say that, like, oh, if you're always enjoying it, then you're never going to feel burnt out. Because, no, that is completely wrong. <laughs> like, I still feel burnt out. And I do enjoy, like, both my day job and the streaming. So, so it's, it's a little bit of that, too. What does justice really mean to you and how can you find harmony? Mm. The weight of pursuing what you feel is just. I'm also going to take a bite of my mac and cheese. While I think of it. I'm I'm kind of liking the collective brainstorming though. Oh, it's hot. The ba the back of cheese is hot. I didn't blow on it. The weight of pursuing what you feel is uh it can be exhaustive. Ah, mm-hmm. Justice is exactly that, unless there are cards that imply a situation where there needs to be justice or it is unjust. Maybe something to do with life balance. You know what? Should we draw another card for you, Mega Bronson? Like a, a clarification card? Maybe that can help. I feel like this one popped out. Went to Marshall's, got some Manuka honey and for cheap. Nice. And it's so good. Cool. Whoa, you got another. 
What is it with the Major Arcana card? So you got the Empress. We did talk about the Virgin de Guadalupe earlier. So here's the imagery of that card. It's Mother Mary, but it's also the Virgin de Guadalupe. Kind of same but different. Um, but let's let's assume we don't know who that is. We have a female figure. She's draped in like this blue uh, cloak. And then behind her is this halo kind of showing her holiness. So um, she's also flanked by different kinds of roses. And uh, kind of like what Nubin said, so uh, are you honoring your feminine side? So the cards have strong feelings. <laughs> so yeah, this could be symbolic of, um, for one, usually this, okay, rewind. There are, there are cards called the court cards, right, which show like a person usually. And that can either be like an idea or it can be a specific person. I feel like this can also be something like that as well, where like the Empress is usually associated with like femininity or femininity in power or the feminine side of yourself. But, you know, if it helps, you can also think of if there's someone in your life that kind of represents these ideals. Right. So um, are you honoring your feminine uh, feminines? Uh, not necessarily women. Exactly. Exactly. So like. Things that are traditionally associated with femininity, so like listening to your emotions, um, taking care of yourself or others. And then Safuri brought up an excellent point that I completely kind of forgot about, is the fact that he's standing on the yin-yang symbol. So we were, we were thinking a lot about like this idea of like justice, injustice, but it's also this idea of harmony and balance. And so... This could be saying that, like, there's an imbalance that has to do with, like, like I said, these qualities that have to do with femininity, such as, like, introversion, um, caring for others, listening to your emotions. So it could be that maybe there's an excess of that or maybe there's not enough of that. But let's go ahead and uh, I won't go into the story for it, but I will go into ah, I will go into this book for it. So the Empress. What is this? Number three. So Our Lady of Guadalupe. This is Mexico, a Catholic saint. The Empress is a loving and protective mother. She cares for and wishes to defend all of her children. Even a mother's love can sometimes be smothering. The world feels bright and everything blooms around her. So fertility, nurturing, ac accomplishment, nature, and abundance. I'm already pretty feminine. <laughs> so like, for, then maybe there's an over excess of something fertility nurturing accomplishment nature abundance but if it's reversed feeling undesirable anxiety lack of concentration smothering and selfishness so it could be an, an imbalance of like maybe maybe there's two like maybe there's uh, aspects that you can emphasize more mm-hmm <laughs> Because now what I'm getting from this is that, like, Justice is also halfway through the Major Arcana, a.k.a. the Fool's Journey. I don't know. Because <laughs> I think what's what's kind of tripping me up is that these are both upright. Because if it was an imbalance of the two, then this would this would be reversed, right? That there's an imbalance. However, this is saying that there is a balance. Or maybe that, like, maybe you need to focus on the fact that there's a balance. Also, I love seeing these cards next to each other. Yeah, true, true, true. So they're both upright. So that's almost like saying that like you do have a balance. And I think that balance is almost because you are acknowledging your feminine side or kind of like the feminine aspects of your personality. And then I'm also thinking about what Nubin said of like it's also halfway through the major arcana. Because that's something I don't think I've ever talked about with like uh, the, these tarot reading streams where it's like um there with the major arcana there is a bit of a story being told and this is halfway through it um what that means is that like maybe there's a little bit more for you in store then i do reversals too but i go based off intuition so i could definitely it uh it could definitely still have a negative aspect of the cards there's a little story of what i'm thinking of yeah feel free to share feel free you still got plenty of time and i'm gonna eat some mac and cheese Okay, the mac and cheese cooled down.
Mm. Don't worry, I am seeing the chat messages. I'm also just eating. <laughs> All right, let's see what we have so far. A while ago at game night, I had a convo with my friend about my life and doing too much and how long I can survive doing it. And while we were at game night, my friend's wife served me tea and drinks and whatnot. And I'll, I'll get to your message soon, new beans. And I was telling him how the tea helped me feel calm for the first time in a while. And he was saying he doesn't think it's the tea, but that someone else is taking care of me instead of doing everything myself. Ah, okay. So to me, that feels almost like a, a the, this word respite, right? Of like just rest. Um, so it, it might not, you know how like we had the hermit earlier for I think Sufuri. Uh, this almost feels like the hermit, but with the aspect of like someone caring for you, someone uh, like you said, like the um, having the tea served to you. It's not necessarily that you need everything served to you on hand and foot, but you just need that I like that feeling that other people are also caring for you. Um, and then it's also sounding like, yeah, because you, you were just talking about how like you're doing a lot right now. So it could be this idea of not even people, not even people quite literally like taking care of you, but just people showing that they can and will support you. Um, this could be more literal in terms of like people at your work or whatever it is that is like stressing you out. People at work just like literally supporting you of like, oh, can I take care of those reports for you? Can I take care of that meeting for you? That kind of stuff. Um, to, but it could also be something kind of like less literal where it's like people like something small of like, oh, hey, I have some candy at my desk. Do you want some candy? You know, because uh, I don't know if the, if your work has that kind of atmosphere, but sometimes like my workplace does that where it's, I remember one time I, I didn't eat properly. <laughs> I think I just forgot because I was just so busy. I was just so busy and like I kind of felt a little weak. And I remember like there, I have a coworker who always has candy at her desk. And I asked her like, oh, can I have some? I feel kind of like faint. And as I said that, three other people at their desk nearby were like, oh, I also have some candy. Do you want some candy? I have this. Do you want this? This is actually a shake that you like put in with water. And just that idea of like other people just jumping to be like, oh, hey, do you need this, this and this? Even if it was just candy, for me, that, that felt really nice, you know? <clears throat> and then New Beans was asking, what is this reading about? I, ge I generally just give, like, very general readings, and I let the, the person just interpret it however they want to interpret it. So that, that's why, like, we're having kind of this whole discussion of just, like, more clarification when needed. It could be that then. I was going to say earlier that the fool's journey in justice calls back the access and putting it into you. It's a rough time at work at the moment. Ah, okay. Are you in a position where you could take a step back or is it like you have to keep on chugging basically? Because like I said, my work, our two work culture, cultures might be very different. Right now, because it's the summer, I'm actually able to like take some time off. But if, if not, you know. Better get busy on you. You've had that before, Omona? Oh man. You're you're a super hard worker though, especially with the uh, with the uh, oh, I'll I'll be at Anime Expo next week, by the way. So I'll definitely be dropping by. <laughs> especially with all the, the stuff you're putting out. Hello. Oh, that's what you meant, Sephori. <laughs> hello everyone. Hello, hello. We're doing some tarot readings. Welcome, Randon. Hello, Randon Knights. Welcome, welcome. If you guys don't know who I am, I'm Babinka Bear, artist, historian, art historian, and Sun Bear PNG tuber. And we're doing a little bit of tarot readings. We're actually reaching a bit of the end because my voice is starting to give out. But uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. Thanks for the raid. 
Um, I'm willing to bet that people are raiding and running, but that's totally fine by me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just, I was just telling Omina that I'm gonna be dropping by Anime Expo next week, but I'll be undercover. You guys won't know. Can you imagine like a little small bear at Anime Expo, <laughs> like an actual sun bear in like a hat, just like, oh, there she is. There's the elusive babinka. <laughs> now I'll be, I'll be undercover. So let me read what Newbeans has said right before the raid, and then we'll, we'll catch up to everyone. So. Feel free, everyone, if you need to raid and run, feel free. Get some water, get some rest, all that kind of stuff. If you want to uh, chill in the chat, you can do that, too. So, I appreciate you. I appreciate y'all being here. And by the way, we also have a one-point redeem. If you're a fan of Filipino snacks, uh, we have a one-point redeem called the Scratch and Sniff a Sticker. <laughs> you can redeem it, and you get a little... There you go. See, you get some little treats on the screen for you. So the Empress kind of confirms that feminine and tarot isn't what it means in the gender sense. It's the energy and feminine energy, making sure you're not spreading yourself out thin, having your needs met and advocating for yourself. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, um, hey, <laughs> why are you throwing things at me? Why are you throwing things? All right, so hello, Raiders. Hello, hello. Orc Raid. Hello, Donchi. Hi, Arsenic. Hi, Easter Bandit. Orb Raid. Hi, Jawler. Hello, hello. Get your stickers, everyone. Get your stickers. Thanks, uh, Matthew, for shouting out Randon. Hi, Hux. Hello, hello. Thanks for the follow, Lala Amanita. Oh, I followed you on Twitter, too. I know you're a fellow streamer as well, right? And thank you for following Sir Saki. Let's see. Who else? Who else? McKay <laughs> Oh, no. Okay, fine. Just for you, I'll, I'll assume bear form when I go to Anime Expo. <laughs> So yeah. How loud is she coming? Thanks for following Mr. Cheesy Dumplings. I love that name. I think I will be wearing her skin suit. I know, with with the non bare hands, am I right? Oh, a double raid. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so much, so much. Everyone's getting their sticker. Glad to be here. I'm glad you're here, Sir Saki. I'm glad. And Donchi was the one who threw things on me. Unbelievable. Because you love me. I love you too. I love you too. Yeah, you gotta get your stickers, everyone. Oh, Matthew, thank you for gifting us up to Omana. Hello, hello. And then Outermost Ghost, thank you for, for the raid. Thank you, thank you. Let's go ahead and give you a shout out as well. Thank you, thank you. If you have to raid and run, no worries. We're doing a little bit of tarot reading, but we are nearing the end of it. Um, I might be able to do one more, and that's that's kind of it, so... Uh, yeah, but we are we're also still chatting with uh, our current reading right now. You guys are probably seeing we have the justice card and we have the empress card. Matthew, did you gift us up to Randon? <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> hello, Hokubishu. Hello, hello. But yeah, Outermost Ghost, uh, thanks for the rate. If you have to rate and run, no worries. If you want to stick around, that's also fine as well. Let me know how your stream went. I'm curious. I'm curious. Take a backseat and let the universe treat you for all the work that you've done. Exactly, Mega Bronson. I love what, what New Beans just said. Let the universe treat you. Beloved Binka. Aw, thanks, guys. So you were playing Outermost Ghost. You were playing Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion. That sounds spooky. And I also feel like I saw Fauna playing that like a couple of years back. Is it like, is it like actually like a horror game or is it more? Because... The designs made it look like it was more so like uh very tongue in cheek. <laughs> like, like is it really scary or is it like oh spooky, you know, like Halloween spooky? Oh yeah. Do you guys know? So some of you are doing the dance. You guys see your your little avatars on the screen right now? There's some uh look, there's some commands that you can do. Command? Is that it? Did I do it? No. I did the wrong one. There you go. You guys want to know what you can do with your little avatars? There, there you go. I'm still catching up. Get supported, nerd. That's totally fine. We just wanted to support. Thank you. I appreciate you. Least I can do uh, for being late for my mod ship. No, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. It was fun. We got room to 5,000. It's Spooky's jump scare, but I was motion sick. Oh no! So it's one of those games, huh? Where it's a little, there's a, there's a lot of movement happening. 
Mr. Pancakes is my Oshi. Yeah. For the newbies, if you guys look at the bottom of my desk, there's a little bear there. That's uh that's your substitute teacher. That's oh you guys are dancing. <laughs> that's Mr. Pancakes. And Balare, thanks for the pet pet. Oh, 500. Still, that's 500 floors. Or rooms, rather. It's very chill. Room 500. Okay, so it's cute. It's a big mansion. Mario Kart is also spooky. You gotta go, but thank you for the stream. It was really nice to listen to the readings. Yeah, thank you for dropping by, Omina. I can't wait to stop by your booth next week. But thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah. If you guys hug or attack, you need to... You need a, a target. You need to say, like, you know, hug Babinko Bear, but don't attack me. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> Let's see, 500. Cool, cool, cool. Brandon got his tarot. He did. Yeah, I gave a tarot reading uh, during my last stream. If I recall, it was the moon and something else. It was the moon reversed. And I forgot the other one, but I, I sent it to him. That projector sent me back to school days. I haven't been one in so long. Yeah, we, we got a little like school aesthetic going on. There's also, I have an art section as well. If you guys want to see the art section. There's art made by other people. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, my desk. No. There we go. <laughs> we also got our main room. We also have detention, but I, I trust you guys. I trust you guys. We're not going to detention, right? <laughs> Gotta watch the VOD. Yeah, no worries. You guys can hug each other. It's true. My nephew. <laughs> All right, I think I caught up. I think I caught up. Hey, no, no throwing things. No throwing things. No. <laughs> it's because you guys want detention, huh? You're feeling a little rowdy. Oh no. <laughs> Wait, let's finish Mega Bronson's reading first. And uh, Goji Kins. Hello, hello. You're getting getting your stick up. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know. We uh, we. Went on a little bit of a tangent there, but um, hopefully these two cards help with your, your predicament. I can understand now that there's a lot of people here. You might not want to talk about it, but um, yeah, hopefully in terms of like any feelings that you're feeling, I kind of like what New Bean said in terms of like kind of uh, letting letting the universe kind of take care of you, whether that be like literal like your coworkers or just someone else in your life. Uh, and yeah. Let me know if you have any questions. And then I think we have room for one more reading and then we might call it there. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love a reading someday. I've never had one. It's rare to see you stream at this hour. Yeah, I'm trying to do like a Saturday morning type thing. So, <laughs> so there's beans and new beans. Yeah, Matthew. So um, <laughs> we have a, this awesome new viewer. We've had a couple of awesome new viewers who, who came in uh, shortly before the raid. So there's new beans. I think Bolari is another one. And if I forgot you, I, I forgive me. But uh, yeah, they've been giving some really awesome insight into like some of these tarot readings. So I appreciate you. We're good to keep talking. OK, OK. New beans seem pretty spot on. Yeah, yeah. School vibes is making me want a jam sandwich. One day I hope to get a reading. So how it's going to work is I'm going to open up the queue really quick with a with a chat command and you have to type uh exclamation point join but not not now when i open the queue <laughs> and then we'll see if i can do uh we'll see who gets it basically okay and if like three people get in at the same time i'm sorry i'm gonna have to <laughs> i'm gonna have to just choose the first one that got it i take a step back and re-energize my own feminine energy yeah there we go exactly did they know about the Digimon watch along later? Yeah, if you guys are interested in uh, Digimon Adventure 1999, we do have a watch along in the Discord uh, later on at 6, I think I said 30 PST. That's about, about five hours from now. Yeah, if you want to join in on that, feel free. There's the link in the chat if you need it. I'm glad you're going to be amazing. Self-care and trust in the world you create. There you go. There you go. So, yeah. Um... Let me know, Mega Bronson, if you want to. I know you said we're good to chat, but let me know if you want a little bit more insight or if we're good to move on. But thank you, thank you. Thank you for always requesting a reading. Dance. Has anyone been sent to Detroit while I was away? No, not at all. Everyone's been really good. Unfortunately, no. Detroit got no new residents. Yeah, you guys have been really good. <laughs> Mm. 
Sorry, I'm just eating my mac and cheese. We can move forward. I don't want to take too much time from the reading. Well, no, no worries. If you want to chat more, like, through DMs, we could do that, too. He didn't get to shoot anyone out of a cannon. Oh, no. All right. Those who want a reading, prep yourself. Prep yourself. I'm going to just take the first one. If five people end up in it, I'm sorry. I'm just taking the first one. So I'm going to open the queue. To join it, you have to put exclamation point join. All right. I'm going to open the queue in. I know there's going to be a delay, but five, four, three, two, one. It's open. I'm getting ready to close it. Okay. I <laughs> think we got some folks. Oh, uh, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know, next time, next time, though, next time. If you guys want me to start doing tarot, like, bi-weekly, I can, I can do that. I can do that, so. <laughs> Sursaki with the trigger finger. Okay, let's, uh, let's see. Bing, bing! Yep, Sursaki, you're gonna be the last one. And then for everyone else, I, I apologize. We'll try to get you next time, though. If you want, we can retain the, the current queue, and then we'll, we'll get you guys next time. And if you guys like this time, too, we could do this time. Survival of the fastest. Rip, I'm sorry! hi yay. <laughs> this may be true, Hux, but you can't be both a little guy and del delicious forever. So, uh, a couple things before I do this reading. Um, you guys will see some rules kind of here in the, in, on the side right next to me. Um, these readings, I don't see them as any kind of magic, you know, not, it's not any kind of magic, the gathering. There's just things to kind of like, um, how do I say this? They're for introspection, not prediction. And what I mean by that is that like, I don't see it as like, oh, it's magic. <laughs> like, this is exactly what's going to happen. Or this is, this is what other people think of you, right? It's more of like, this is an idea that you can focus your thoughts on, uh, and see like how much it applies to you. Just this past reading with Mega Bronson, for example, the meaning wasn't immediately clear. Like, oh, how does this relate to my current situation? Which is totally fine, you know? Like, it's more of like, oh, think of this and think of how it applies to what, what you're, you're kind of going through right now. It's for self-thought. Exactly what Outermost Ghost said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, feeding your kitten right now. Nice. Legally and spiritual binding, if it doesn't come true, you can sue. No! No, the slander. I'm in shambles. No. It's not spiritually binding. It's it's just it's just for a little hee hee ha ha. <laughs> sue the crypt. I'm not a crypto bear. Everything is is fungible. Everything's fungible. Ah! Why? No. <laughs> it's in the spirit realm court, so good luck. <laughs> I'm in shambles. She has more karma. <laughs> okay, so for Surasaki, it's not fungible, you got no, it is. It's it's all completely fungible. Okay. So for Surasaki. <laughs> Let's get this card. Real cases, real spirits, judge spirit. Dun dun. <laughs> okay. Ooh, we got yet another major arcana card. So this is a pretty cool one. This is called the magician. By the way, this deck that I'm using is a mix of traditional tarot, but it also has folklore and fairy tales. So we have the magician. And the figure here is actually the fairy godmother from Cinderella. So the magician tradition... Well, here's how I, I kind of like to start off the reading is just by looking at the imagery. So, and we... Let's assume that, like, we don't know what the story is. Like, we don't know what, like, Cinderella... Let, let, just, let's just assume. Um, so if we look carefully at just the art of this, we see a figure with a wand. She has a, um, a feminine presenting figure. She's got big old hair, big old dress. Uh, a pretty peaceful expression. I know it's not easy to see with like my, my camera. She's holding a wand and right above her is like a little spark. 
it kind of overlaps with the sky though so it it could double as either a comet or a shooting star that's usually associated with wishes right like a shooting like you can wish on a shooting star that kind of thing um but it could also be coming from her wand so the implication is that like she is kind of uh making the wishes come true are those tarot cards a witch <laughs> no no, like I said, like I don't see these cards as like magical in any way. Like I don't see that they predict the future or how other people will feel about you. It's just a way to help direct your thoughts, so to speak. So, so yeah, I don't I don't consider myself a witch, but there I think there are other tarot readers who do consider themselves like more aligned with that. So <laughs> no, don't burn me. I'm just a little bear. I'm just a little bear. Um. Going back to this, so like this idea of like granting wishes, it could be if we assume that, for example, it's like a shooting star, then it's something external that is kind of like granting your wishes, so to speak, or making your wishes come true. But because it's also like attached to her wand, it's something that she's actively doing. Like it's coming from her, not necessarily external factors. So kind of hinting at this is like kind of having, I usually associate the magician with like having resources, the resources to make whatever your uh not dream but like whatever it is that you want to happen it comes from you it doesn't come from any external factors it comes from you and your resources um what else do we have here so we have like the traditional cinderella imagery we have the the pumpkins with the little rats we are the rats and the pumpkins are growing right like you see all of this greenery here that's like growing around the fairy godmother so basically like by her actions and by her resources She's making magic happen. She's making these uh, these pumpkins grow. And if you know the tale of Cinderella, eventually the little rats are going to become uh, humans, question mark. I'm already forgetting how the story goes. <laughs> um, but notice that it's not Cinderella that's being like, it's not necessarily the recipient of these wishes. But what, what we're being shown is the person that is making it happen. So that's one interpretation right there is, are you Cinderella receiving the gifts or are you the fairy godmother making the gifts happen? Now let's see. Smoked bear? No, it would taste terrible. Please tell me there's a Shrek tarot deck out there. Probably, probably. There might even be a you know. <laughs> I was gonna say maybe there's an orc tarot deck. Maybe there's a there's a random <laughs> tarot deck. That would be amazing. Time for you to become the one to make it. I don't have the skills. Yeah, you do. Oh, my voice is going. It is a lot of time though, so understandable, understandable. You'll have to subcontract an artist. Horses, I think. Oh, you're right. I think they do become the horses. You're right. Wend and tarot deck. <laughs> this deck was made for me. New merch idea? Ooh, what's that? What's that link, Matthew? Oh my god, there is a Shrek tarot deck. <laughs> Haunts. So I have two two partner books here. We have um this is kind of like a bit more towards the tarot side of things and the other one is the actual story that goes with it once so let's let's have our little cheat sheet here the magician so this is the fairy godmother from cinderella the magician is a helping hand she has the ability to change raw materials into something wonderful and dreaming into doing but she is only helping she's only the helping hand it's up to the protagonist to use her support moving forward to do the right thing so upright, this represents originality, self-confidence, skill, a breakthrough, and resourcefulness. Like I said, for me, like I personally uh, associate this card with like resourcefulness, like having resources and um, kind of doing your thing with like how you use those resources. Because like, how do I say this? If it's something like, for example, research based, like let's say that you have your resources with you, it's now more so how, how are you going to write the paper <laughs> or how are you going to like, you know, compile all those resources to help you with what it is you need to do. An alchemist, huh? <laughs> Actually, yeah, like alchemy is one way to also see this card. I've always wanted to get into tarot and lighter spirituality stuff, but I do believe in fate. Ah, there you go. Like I said, like people who practice tarot, they're not always like on the religious or mystical side. Like for me, example, I don't really, I personally like don't really believe too much into it. But there are people who do. So don't don't ever let me stop you. Don't ever let me stop you into like getting more into it. 
for me, it's fun because, you know, like as an art historian, I do love like looking at art and interpreting it in different ways. So um, that's why I kind of like tarot because it's ultimately up to your own interpretation. So uh, it, is, it does just take a lot to memorize each of the each of the meanings, which is why I'm using my little cheat sheet here. No link to buy them. Oh, no. Nia de Delta, hello, 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 welcome. Nature is so beautiful, there's got to be more to this life. Yeah, that, that I do empathize with, though. <laughs> I do love that. I have tarot, I just suck at interpretation. You know, it's, it's a skill to just keep on practicing. Like I said, I'm not perfect. <laughs> like, I'm not perfect with these readings. It just takes a lot of dan dancing. I got distracted by everyone dancing. It takes some practice. The opportunity to make the tarot is there. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, resourcefulness. Let's uh, let's see if the actual tale gives us a little bit more insight too. And then you might be able to hear it in my voice. I'm starting to get <laughs> a little tired. So let me take a sip of water. And then I think we might end it after we read the story. <clears throat> Okay. The Tale of the Fairy Godmother. We're getting a little bit of story time. <laughs> I just need to find it. <laughs> Oh, it's the last one. It it would be the last one. You've been going for almost three hours. I have. <laughs> but it's okay, though. I enjoy this. <clears throat> okay. The fairy godmother is a helpful creature who has supported many heroes and heroines, none more famously than Cinderella. Cinderella was a beautiful girl. Oh, you know what? Here, you guys can see the art as well. It's really pretty. Uh, Cinderella was a beautiful girl whose kind mother died when Cinderella was very young. After remarrying a cold woman with two bitter daughters, Cinderella's father died also. This left Cinderella orphaned and in the, in the care of her resentful stepmother. Angry that Cinderella was more beautiful than her own daughters, the stepmother put Cinderella to work, mending the laundry, cleaning the house, and doing all the cooking. Each night, Cinderella slept in the ashes of the kitchen fireplace and became filthy. Quiet Cinderella bore all of this abuse patiently until she heard about the upcoming royal ball. It was a night of celebration with all the young ladies of the country invited to meet the prince. Cinderella wished to go to the party, but when she asked her stepmother and stepsisters, they all laughed in her face. Who would want to dance with a dirty girl covered in ashes? Cinderella cried as her stepfamily put on the beautiful gowns and rode away to the ball. It was then that the fairy godmother, hearing Cinderella's sobs, appeared to help her. The fairy godmother told Cinderella that because her heart was sweet and pure, she would help her by turning a pumpkin into a carriage, mice into horses, rags into a ball gown, and dirt into glass slippers. But she warned that the spell would break at midnight, and the rest was up to Cinderella. Gleefully, Cinderella rode into the ball and met the prince. He was instantly dazzled by her, and she by him, and they danced, they danced the night away. Just like you guys, just like the Babinkovs. <laughs> at midnight, Cinderella remembered the fairy godmother's warning and fled the ball, leaving behind a broken pumpkin and a single glass slipper. The prince began to search for the mysterious girl, insisting that every young lady in the realm try the glass slipper. But it didn't fit anyone until it finally slipped on the ash-covered foot of Cinderella. Rejoicing, the prince and Cinderella were soon married, and the fairy godmother blessed their union. So I know a lot of people already know that story, but it also kind of helps to read through it again, just to get more um, interpretations of the card as well. I kind of like the part in the story where it says that like she would provide the materials, but the rest was up to Cinderella. So depending on what it is that you are kind of going through, Sursaki, it could be that like you have the, the resources in mind, you have uh, what you need to make your next move, but ultimately it's up to you to execute it. We actually did get a reading for another viewer, Kuriketa, where they had the, um, the Ace of Wands, where it was like, you have all these ideas in your head, now it's up to the execution. How, how do you do that execution? It is up to you, but if you need a little bit more guidance with that. I think what I told Kuriketa was like thinking about kind of like your why as well as like 
we we talked about like you know are you going into uh like we were talking about like this feeling of aimlessness so like are you doing something for kind of like financial reasons which is also just as valid or is it a passion project do the best with what you got this actually hits something and is giving me some thoughts to consider there you go yeah exactly that's that's pretty much the goal with these tarot readings is to like hopefully let your brain also make those connections in any way that you want and kind of give you that aha moment. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. That's totally fine as well. So yeah, Huck's got a Jamathy's Samsonian. Wait, what's that? <laughs> also, let me catch up. A Jam Samuel. A Jam Samuel. <laughs> You're doing great, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Read 09A books? Is that is that like AO3, but different. <laughs> Easiest way to perform black magic. I don't want to perform black magic. I just like I just like looking at art and uh and analyzing it. That's my that's my shtick. That I'm a I'm an artist historian and art historian. <laughs> Booberry jam. But yeah, let me know if you have any questions, Sir Saki. Otherwise, that is pretty much the reading. Um yeah, if you guys want me to do tarot readings more often, I totally can. Because I feel bad. So many people were interested, but I wasn't able to, to give you the reading. So, well, we'll see. We'll see. The art of cursing your enemies. No! <laughs> but you know what? Let us do this. So we do have a end of stream tradition. Um, it's our end of stream mosh pit. So... <laughs> Um, and all you really have to do for it is, uh, I do enjoy the tarot. I'm glad. I'm glad. Let's see. This was the first tarot reading I've gotten, so this was fun and insightful. Yeah, you let me know if you have any, like, follow-up questions or anything. But yeah, if you guys, uh, want to stick around for the mosh pit, all you gotta do is pick an emote. Open up the pit. <laughs> pick an emote and spam it. I also have a chat command where your avatars are gonna beat each other up, but... <laughs> It's kind of randomized. There's not really much you can do to quote unquote win <laughs> the wash pit. But you know, you know. Um, okay, what should we listen to today? We could do I kinda want to do guilty gear. <laughs> I kinda wanna do guilty gear, so let's actually do guilty gear. I'm actually gonna close my webcam. Oh actually wave goodbye and then let's close the webcam then i'll decide who we can raid into as well moshing music so once you hear the song go ahead and oh let me turn off the there we go you can go ahead and start moshing There you go. And the mosh pit is starting. Look at your avatars. Now this potion's amazing. Yo, HDTQ W5, you won. You got the mosh pit. And guess what, guys? We could do it again. We're going to do it again. <laughs>
Wait, I was looking away. You won again. <laughs> Should we do it a third time? <laughs> I didn't even realize you you did it again. <laughs> Round three, baby. <laughs> Ain't no way. Ain't no way HD's gonna win again. Ain't no way. <laughs> He's going for a third. You didn't. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> Undisputed champ. He's going crazy. <laughs> this event is the GOAT. <laughs> know the smell of the... Know the smell of the... Know the smell of the game. Wow. <laughs> wow. And thanks, Matthew, for gifting us up to them. <laughs> This was fun. You guys all get an A++++ in my book. And congrats on the three-time winner, HDTQW5. Sniff of the game! <laughs> an absolute unit. There you go. Hey, pet pet. <laughs> Thank you. Now you know where to direct your attacks. All right. Good job, everyone. We are going to raid into Mushi Bear. She's a fellow bear VTuber. She's really sweet too. Uh, sometimes says cursed things, but you all lost the game now. <laughs> no. Um, I do have that Digimon watch along on my Discord at 6.30 p.m. PST tonight. And then I'll have my schedule for next week out by Sunday. So um, if you want to keep track of my schedule, it's also on my social media. There you go. I got my VODs there and my, my twi- ah! Got rotated. <laughs> and got rotated. But yeah, let's go ahead and raid into Mushi Bear. And uh, I'll, I'll see you guys in a little bit if you're watching the Digimon Watch Along. And if not, I'll see you guys next week. Alright? So, thank you everybody. Go ahead and start that raid. Have a good morning, afternoon, or evening. And as always, I'll see you guys when I see you guys. <laughs>